Hey guys. What's up? <laughs> We're gonna be doing some KSP. I thought I'd give some people on the other side of the world a chance to see a live stream if they wanted to. This isn't announced or anything, so don't think you didn't see a notification or anything. Um, I'm usually okay at telling people when I'll stream in advance, but today I have a really tight schedule and I see that I have about an hour and a half or so of time here and I went, you know, I'm gonna do this. So here we go. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna open up the game, obviously. That's, that's a thing. And we have, and Couchbot hasn't kicked in yet. Yeah, yeah, Couchbot's that way, isn't he? Now, let me make sure my settings really quick here. Uh, I wanna make sure my settings are correct because you're probably saying, ah, his microphone's not on. No, it totally is this time. Ha! Ah, microphone is totally on this time. Didn't mess that up. <laughs> okay, so, um, what I'm going to do today, we have two goals today. First, I'm just going to recap the base, and then we're going to collect all the parts. So the ground base sample is pretty much done. I'll show you guys that. Um, and then we're going to gather all the parts up. We're going to, you know, basically recover all the vessels because I'm out of money. You'll notice I only got 61000 left. And the 61000 is there because, well, that's, that's it. That's all. I actually had to do a contract. I had to do some stupid contract you know put a satellite in orbit contract just to get enough money to continue the base and even then it's still like <laughs> it's it's still not it's still not done and i don't actually have the parts to completely finish it in order to have a full assembly line in order to fully have manufacturing and everything that i need on the base i'm gonna need parts from not this one not this one where'd it go not orbital assembly, although it might be this one. I think it's this, this one right here. The Tundra Assembly Plant. Um, the Tundra Assembly Plant is the manufacturing facility that I need in order to create, like, everything. It's just, it's, it, it makes colony supplies so I can sustain colonies. It's the only part I can find that actually makes machinery. It makes material kits. It makes specialized parts. Um, this is the thing I need to fully complete it. And in order to get this part... As you can tell, um, I need a thousand science. But it's not just that, uh, because there's another thing I need to fully complete it. Uh, I gotta find it. I forget where it is. This is gonna be helpful too. This um, aerospace composites is gonna be really helpful too because of that that ventral cargo bay right there. I want that. I have a use for that, but I don't have enough to unlock it yet. Um, there was another part here. I don't remember where it is. I was looking for it, but. Uh, I don't think it's truly that necessary to find it, but that's the thing I need right there. I need a thousand science for that. So today, uh, what we're going to do, first I'm going to show you the base and we're going to collect it. So let's just go to the runway here, uh, rover and trailer, probably not. I want the base, this one. Let's fly this. It's not really flying, but you know, you get it. Um, so this is a concept base, right? This is all this was was a test. This is roughly what I want my minimum space to operate as, but not necessarily look like. Um, and then we're gonna work on getting this stuff into orbit, and that will be getting the stuff into orbit and getting the stuff into Minmus and things. Those are gonna be in episodes. These streams are just planning stages and stuff. But I am gonna do a mission tonight, or I am good today, I guess. It's so used to doing it at night for me. I am gonna do a mission today with you guys. Uh, we're gonna take the new. Um, the new, um, what do you call it? Um, <laughs> the scimitar, right? So I had an SSTO, right? That um, The scimitar, the thing that took the 64 tons of cargo up into space, right? The two cyclotrons. That plane uh, doesn't work. Like it, it just won't operate without Ferrum Aerospace Research installed. It needed FAR. Um, there was also a problem with the cargo bay without FAR installed. There was a whole bunch of things that were wrong. So, I've gone ahead and I've got um, a new plane. It's based on the scimitar with some modifications that work for stock. And we're going to use it. We're going to use that plane to take a mission up to the space station today. So that's the second thing we're doing. And then after that, I'll call the stream because after that, I probably have to go. So. Here's the base idea. Again, if you've seen these planning b streams before, if you've got a chance to watch the other streams before, you know that this, these modules right here are like not gonna be looking like this. They're not gonna be 
sitting out in the open like this, all over the place, unorganized, right? They're not gonna be like that. Um, this was mostly just me plugging pieces in where I needed them to see the logistics of things and how it operates. With the base setup like this, even though it looks terrible with everything just kind of being unorganized, but with it operating like this, it can sustain itself. It can be completely self-sufficient as long as it's, um, oh, Nikhil, well, bye. Uh, it can be completely self-sufficient if it has that Tundra assembly plant. So once I have that, I can do it. Other than that, I can do anything I want with this base. I can create anything I want. I can build a ship. I can build things in orbit. I can do all that stuff. So um, yeah, so anyway, let's get the rover really quick because I want to recover everybody in one big go here. Because I need all the money. But this right here, I've added this since the last stream. I've added a couple of things, really. I've added these extra drills, which is on this trailer. And these extra drills are also attached to converters, which are working on converting materials as well. Um, then we've got these tanks here, which has my chemicals and organics and things like that. There's water up here. And this is an extra planetary launch pad survey station. I need the survey station in order to build anything. Apparently, I can't do it from the workshop. I thought I could. I, I thought I could prompt ships to be constructed from the workshop, but I can't. The workshop creates material kits. That's good, but it doesn't um, like prompt any assemblies for extraplanetary launch pads. So that's what I needed in order to prompt those builds. Kind of, kind of odd. Uh, and then what else? I've added this little thing right here. Is really bizarre. I needed this little guy, um, this little auxiliary control module, and it's because. For whatever reason, these fusions, these fuel cells, this fuel cell array that's going all around the tank here, for whatever reason, those fuel cells, they're not really transporting fuel. They're not really transporting power the way I wanted. They're just not like transmitting power. It's really odd. But if I add the auxiliary control module, it adds a power supply unit to the base, and then it somehow allows that to be transported. It's really weird. I don't know if it's a bug or if I just got lucky or unlucky or what have you, but um, you know, that's what I'm going for. Um, so if you've never seen one of these live streams before, um, basically just know that none of this stuff, I, I see Elias's comment right now, just know that uh, all of this stuff here is not going to be sent from Kerbin to Minmus or to Duna or to Eve or, you know, Elu or wherever we're going. We're not sending all this stuff to to that base. What we're doing is we're sending three or four modules, the initial setup, the initial stuff that I need, right? That's what we're setting up. And then from there, we build this stuff on the surface using the surface's resources. So it's not gonna cost us, like this base right here is like $2 million or something like that. It's ridiculous. Um, I don't know how much it is. Let's 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 dock to one of these trailers, and then we can. Uh, if I dock to one of these trailers, I should be able to recover this rover along with the rest of the base. So I just want to make sure I'm not missing anything. I don't think so. I don't think I'm missing anything I wanted to cover. No, we have almost every resource here on the base here. Almost every raw resource and um, produced resource is is active on the base here right now as well as a lot of kerbals who are starving because I actually don't have any supplies um, I'm not manufacturing the supplies I, I know that I can I have the logistics set up to do it I'm just not drilling for the stuff necessary to do it because I wasn't concerned with that I was concerned with manufacturing other things so all right so I'm just gonna dock this to the trailer and then that that should merge this vehicle with the rest of the base and then allow me to just recover all of it all at once. Come on now. Are you just like off center or what? What's going on here? Apparently I'm not lined up. Thought I was, apparently not. And there, is that better? There we go. So the whole base, I should be able to recover all of this now, but I like this. I think this worked out really well. I think this can be something really great. Uh, I might put more habitation and less agroponics just to give it more um, like for habitation, for homesickness and stuff. I might do that. Um, 
but other than that, I, I like actually like this fuel tank setup too. There's a lot of fuel here, and I think that's probably enough fuel. Because when am I ever going to have a craft that I want to build to where I want to put in more than, you know, 11,000 oxidizer or 9,000 liquid fuel? When am I ever going to want to put more than that in one craft? I don't know. I don't think I'm going to. And if I do want to, then I suppose I could just take one of these like this, and I'll just bring another one out to the base and put it on the other end or something, and then we'll have a whole bunch of electric charge. Um, so there you go. Okay, so welcome to the stream, guys. Sorry I didn't announce it. I know that might make a little people upset. Don't worry, this is available after the stream is done. You can watch it then, it's fine. We're also not gonna go as long this time as usual because it's in the middle of my work day and I do have to like, you know, do that work stuff. Okay, I need to recover that separately, but whatever. We'll recover this vessel and let's see how much money we can get from that. There should be a ton of dollars invested in that base and I should get a whole bunch of money back. Krios, you didn't miss anything other than a recap. Uh, all I did is a recap of the base and what I've done so far, and now I'm collecting the base. So I'm done with the surface base on Kerbin. I've got a f firm grasp of what I want to do now, and now it's all about making it happen on Mimis. Okay, how many how many how much funds did I get back? 1.2 million funds. I thought I'd get more than that. No, I only got 98% of the value. Well. I did spend a lot on the material kits to bring it out there, though. That was a lot of my money, so I understand. Okay, 3.6 reputation for that. Not sure how that happened, but I'll take it. Cool. Uh, and now I have to recover all this other stuff, so let's just zoom out really quick. We'll recover this. We'll recover the survey stake. Yep, that's one fund. Cover this debris, I suppose. There's 31 parts involved there. And we'll recover this debris. Okay, so that base is cleaned up. KSC is looking nice and nice and tidy again. So now I want to show you the new plane. Um, I have a new space plane. I'd like to show you that. So let's go to the space plane hangar. We're gonna take we're gonna be taking some cargo to the uh, PISS today. Um, but I want to show like some of the changes I had to make to the scimitar to actually get it to fly in stock aerodynamics. Um, all of my KS, almost all of my KSP experience from the very beginning of starting to play KSP, almost all of my experience is with Ferrum Aerospace Research installed. It's with FAR. FAR is not compatible with 122. It doesn't look like it's going to be anytime soon. I'm just going to abandon the idea of even having it. Um, it does add a lot of processes and a lot of background processing and stuff to the game. So I'm, I'm okay with not having it. I just have to learn how that works. And so I want to show you the before and after, basically. Here's the before. It, there's not a whole lot of changes that needed to be made, but it, there was a few. Here is the PII Scimitar. This is the plane that was take that took the big, large amounts of cargo uh, up to the space station before. It's got a, it's got two mainsail engines, two Valkyrie engines, and two Nerve V engines. Um, when we take off from the landing strip, we have to use the Valkyries up until about 80 meters per second, 75 meters per second. Then we have to hit the main sails, otherwise we're not going to have enough, uh, enough speed to generate the lift we need to get off the landing pad. Uh, to get off the landing strip, or the runway, or whatever you want to call it. So, that was my... And then I had to basically ascend at like 5 degrees the whole time, because it, I needed the speed to continue to increase while the altitude increased. If I just went all altitude, I wouldn't have enough speed to get into orbit. If I went all speed, I'd have to use my mainsails too long and I wouldn't get completely in orbit. I'd get up to space, but I wouldn't get completely in orbit because I, was, I would run out of oxidizer. So there would be like this balance that I had to do before. And it was quite difficult. Um, I thought it was quite difficult. It's probably easy for a lot of people, but I thought it was quite difficult. We've got these big stabilizers up front and these are all B9 wings here. Now the problem with B9 wings, these are like the legacy parts from B9. The problem with B9 wings is that they're not really good with stock aerodynamics. They're not really tuned for that. They're tuned for FAR. And that's why I've liked B9 so much is because their parts are like, we like FAR. And it's like, yes, cool, awesome. Well, um, these don't work with this. And the re I've been testing this plane so much. I've made so many modifications to it. It just, it won't break 12K. I cannot get above 12K. It's like, I, I can't even get past 330 meters per second is speed. It won't do it. Um, and I would, I got to the point where I was actually, I was actually falling. My, my altitude was, was lower or was lowering. And I was losing speed at the same time. It didn't make any sense to me. I was like, I'm falling, 
and slowing down. S something was up with the aerodynamics here. So I've ditched these wings. These wings are gone now. And I'll, I will, again, I'm gonna show you the, the new tuned version. I'm just kind of going through the tour really quick for those who wanna know. There's also another bug with the Mark IV sp space plane system. The bug is that the cargo bay and the drone core, this is a drone core, so I could fly this unmanned if I wanted to. Um, th if the drone core is attached in any way next to a cargo bay, the cargo bay gets all screwed up. And what was happening also with my, my test flights, and I tried it with an empty cargo bay too. Granted, this is a plane that could get to the PISS easily with fuel to spare with, a six, with 64 tons of cargo. I couldn't break 12K, I couldn't break 330 meters per second with an empty cargo bay with stock aerodynamics with this plane. Um, and one of the reasons why I couldn't do that was because, because of this drone core and the, the way these two things are bugged out, the cargo bay acts as if it's not a cargo bay. It acts like the, the stuff you put inside it is like not covered. So you get all the drag from your payload. So that was hurting me too. So I've, I've modified it to where I no longer have the drone core and it fixes the problem. So other than that, and these tanks here, I've, I've, I've switched out these tanks, I'll show you. So you see the plane, okay? You see the way this plane is now. I've switched out the engines the scimitar has been retired. It is now called the broadsword. The scimitar is now called the broadsword. Now the scimitar had 121 parts. Uh, I also made the scimitar two, and then I made a scimitar mark two from there. So here's the scimitar two that I tried. My my one version I tried to, to change things in. Doesn't look like a whole lot has changed, but there's actually quite a few parts and stuff that I've kind of tweaked and repositioned, that didn't work. That was not a very interesting reveal, sorry. Um, so the scimitar has been retired. It's now been turned into the broadsword. So this is the broadsword. Now, it looks a little different. It's not super different. It's just an evolution of the first, like it's just an evolution of the scimitar, but it's improved for stock aerodynamics and I'll show you how. First thing is first, um, the wings are the primary thing that was stopping me from getting into orbit before. The pr primary thing that was stopping me from flying before was the wings. Uh, before, the wings were 18 parts total from both sides. There are about nine parts for each wing. Uh, now, it's a lot less, I think. Well, actually, it might be... I, I didn't count the stabilizers, actually, so it's more than nine parts before. But now it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so there's nine parts in this wing. And then there was a lot more in the last wing, but because it was all tiled. This whole wing is one part, and then I've got other things attached to the wing. So, like, I've reduced the part count in that way. Then, I switched out the Valkyrie engines and the mainsails. I've switched out both of them for these broadsword engines, which is why the plane is named the broadsword. So these four broadsword engines. Now, the broadsword engine is not as... It's not as efficient as the Valkyrie. It gets less ISP, but it, it, it compensates for that by having a lot more thrust. Um, and not a whole lot more thrust, but a lot more, but more. So if I go to this, we have 540 kilonewtons of thrust with um, a 4300 ASL, 4300 ISP in the atmosphere, right? So this is probably the best balance I can have for a high for a high speed plane, best balance I can have is 540 kilonewtons of thrust per engine with a 4300 ISP. It was perfect. I loved it. Valkyrie did a great job. Broadsword, slightly less thrust on the, slightly less thrust on the, in the atmosphere with jet fuel. It's only 530 instead of 540. The ISP is also 3600 instead of 4300. So it's less efficient and it's slightly less powerful with the jet engines. It has also more weight. So you might be thinking, okay, how does the broadsword make a better plane for this? It's weaker, it's heavier, and it's less efficient. Why use it? Well, because the two broadswords can also replace the mainsails, okay? So the two broadswords replace the mainsail. Now the mainsail is six tons and the broadsword is still 7.6 tons each. So hear me out on this. I have four engines 
all of which are much heavier and less efficient than the ones they replaced, right? And they're also weaker than the ones they replaced. They're weaker than the jet engines and they're weaker than the, than the, than the rockets. Why use them? It's because all of these engines have that dual mode. All of these engines have the ability to burn jet fuel and switch and burn rocket fuel. And because of that, they're actually more valuable to me. The Valkyrie engines, as soon as I get up to about 19K, they're useless. They cut out and it's just dead weight all the way up to space. For the remainder of the mission, they're dead weight. These, however, can function. And these can also function as well. So what I end up having with the broadsword engines, I get 733 kilonewtons of thrust, 8, 820 in a vacuum. So 733, 820 in a vacuum. That's per broadsword. With the mainsail, I get uh, just under 1400, okay? With a 285 ASL. And I know this is a lot of technical stuff, but for those of you guys who like the technical details of of KSP, those of you guys are like to really dig into the numbers and parts and things like that, you might enjoy this part. Other people, you're probably like, just fly it. I understand that. The purpose of these streams is for the technical people. The purpose of the episodes is for the rest of everybody. So the main sail, 285 ASL. So it's it's got a 285 ISP in the atmosphere while it's burning in atmosphere. When it gets to the vacuum, it's 310. That's the main sail. That's the one that's replaced. The broadsword is more efficient in both respect. It has a 295 and a 330. So if I combine two broadswords, I get more thrust than one mainsail. And since I have two additional broadswords replacing the Valkyries, I actually end up with four broadswords, which are more efficient in both atmosphere and vacuum than the two mainsails with more thrust. If that, does that make sense? You'll see what I mean in a second. You guys saw in the in the episodes, and if you don't know the episode, go back to episode 64. 64 is the episode where I took the scimitar with the 64 tons of cargo, a little bit more than that, and I got it up to space. And you can see the ascent profile that I used in that episode. It's, it's very narrow, it's very specific. You have to time things perfectly to get it to do what we need to do. With the amount of thrust that this has, and the the versatility of both of these engines, I don't have to deal with these this narrow, shallow ascent profile anymore. I just go. Just get up to as high as you can, as fast as you can, because these won't slow down. So, let me show you. These wings are all fixed. I've got the I've got the the thruster blocks, RCS, all that stuff. We got lots of uh, air intakes. So we need lots of air to feed these engines. So we got lots of air there. And we're good to go. Let's make sure our crew is good. I want Andre and Dylan. That's good. Yep. Okay, our cargo for today. Uh, now, now, the plane kit is also versatile. I can change it up too. So, for example, here, I still have the four deep cargo bay, right? There's four cargo bay sections here. And this is our cargo for today. It's not that heavy of a cargo. I forgot to bring my tug to the station when I built it. I forgot to put the tug on the station. So, we're going to bring the tug back up. Then uh, I'm really short on science, and at the start of this, at the start of the stream, I said I wanted to get that research so I can get the assembly started. I'm gonna need research for that, so I'm bringing up some more modules for station science, and we're gonna run some more science on the station. Um, but here's the thing: this payload doesn't require like three wide on these cargo bays, right? So I have the versatility with this with this build now because of the way these different tanks are set up and everything. I can just go like this if I want to take this off and now I have whoop, and now I have a shorter plane which is still balanced over its center of mass which still has the uh, center of lift behind the behind the center of mass right over the wheels everything is still completely balanced we're a lot lighter and our thrust to weight ratio is much improved we could go straight up with this plane notice the thrust to weight ratio is 105 I could go straight up in the air. I don't even have to go laterally with this plane right now. Um, so it's it's really, really fast. And that's the reason why I opted for the... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this back, though. That's the reason why I opted for the broadswords. Because even though they're less efficient, I get to spend a lot less time in the atmosphere. And so since I'm spending less time in the atmosphere, that efficiency doesn't matter as much. 
it's, it's like, do you, would you rather drive a thousand miles in a car that gets 30 miles per gallon or drive 400 miles in a car that gets 25 miles per gallon? You're going to use a lot less fuel with the second option than the first option. So even though they're less efficient, I'm spending a lot less time in the atmosphere. And it's when I activate the rockets, that's when I'm gaining efficiency. As soon as I activate the rockets, I'm gaining efficiency over my previous design. And that's what I'm looking for. So here we go. We're going to launch this plane now. I just wanted to do a quick double check, make sure my staging's correct. Sometimes it moves on me. Da -da 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 -da. Looks good. I think we're good. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, I think, I'm, I think I've explained this well. I want to check my action groups really quick, too. Broadsword modes, uh, that's the nerve. Solar panels, that's the intake close, and this should be the cargo bay. Yep, okay. Okay, then, so, what's these? This is, hold on, what are those engines? I think those are the engines that are inside this. Yes, that's what those are. Okay, good. Let's close this up, and let's go. Now, without the base on, without that base demo on the on the runway or next to the runway, I should get a lot better frame rates than I have been during testing. Um, I actually cheated myself 500 grand so that I could test this out and and really do a lot of not have to worry about the money for the design and just test it out. And then I removed the 500 grand once I was done um, with the testing. But it's um. Like the plane flies really well now, and it used to be a challenge to get off the runway with FAR and with the scimitar. It used to be a challenge to get off the runway. You'd have to take the Valkyrie engines, you'd have to fire them up with the brakes on, let them really build up their, you know, let them charge up, if you will. Hold on. Kerbals are going nuts here. Let's activate the brakes really quick here. So you'd have to have the brakes on, and there's a whole bunch of, there's a whole bunch of drag for the wings as well. We've got an adequate supply of monopropellant. We're going to be using that to get back in the atmosphere. And hopefully we can land today uh, on the runway. That's the hope anyway. So, Andre, you are the pilot. Activate this. Activate this. And off we go. And let them build up a bit. There we go. All right. All right. Now, this is probably loud for you guys, so I'm going to turn it down a bit. Turn it down on the stream, turn it down on my PC. They're pretty loud engines. So now, though, it's not a challenge to get up into space. Now it's really easy. Or now it's really easy to get off the runway. I just lift it up and I go. Because it's just a different design. It just works better. So I have a really steep ascent profile for this. I can gain speed while climbing. I don't have to do it so narrow anymore. So I'm holding, I'm putting this window up here. I right click the engine, I right click one of the broadswords, and I put this over here, because I want to see how much thrust the engines are getting. As long as this number is increasing, I know that my ascent profile is fine for now. As long as this number's going up and this number's going up, I'm happy. But I'd like it to go up faster than it is, so I'm actually gonna dip it down just a little bit. That should be good enough. Yep, I think that'll probably be all right. Now what we want to do, the, the name of the game here basically is to go as fast as possible, um, as fast as possible to space. Uh, so we, we don't want to spend a whole lot of time in the atmosphere. The more time we spend in the atmosphere, the more fuel I'm burning with less efficiency. So I'm going to end up with less fuel for the nerve engines later and less fuel for the nuclear engines later. Um, and I'm actually kind of convinced that I brought too much oxidizer. I probably should have brought less oxidizer with me, but we'll see how this goes. So, up we go. Just got to get higher. It's, my thrust is going down. My surface speed is actually climbing slightly, even though I'm at about, almost 40 degrees. So, this is good. And the really cool thing about these broadswords is they work really well at super high speeds. Uh, specifically, like, almost Mach 4. They work the most efficiently They're with their maximum thrust at Mach 4. So the goal here, and you're going to see it, um, before it used to be, with a scimitar, it was like, come on, get to 20k so I can activate the mainsail. <laughs> uh, with the broadsword, it's like, alright, it's at 35k, I think it's time to activate the mainsail. 
I mean, it's like the broadswords are just infinitely better as soon as you get to the point where you want to go to space. All right, let's narrow ourselves down here. We're losing surface speed. We're losing thrust. We're at almost 12K now, so let's increase our speed. We want to really, we want to really activate speed now. So I'm going to go about 10 degrees. Not super flat or anything. We're still climbing. But we want to see that thrust. I want to see that thrust to go to 1,000 kilonewtons or higher. Uh, there's no reason why I shouldn't have over a thousand kilonewtons of thrust on each broadsword by the time I, I'm ready to go up. And then when we're ready to go up, up, like way up, up, um, I'll basically know the, nose us back up to like 30 degrees and we'll just activate the, or we'll, we won't even activate it. We'll just let it run its course. We'll, we'll run the, we'll run the broadswords in air breathing mode as long as we want, as long as possible. We'll let it switch itself. So basically, that's the thing that needed to happen. I needed to, I needed to remove the drone core because that was messing with the aerodynamics of the of the cargo bay. That's a confirmed thing. It's it's on the forums for Mark IV Space Plane System. Um, I didn't even realize that was a thing until I read the forum, and I was like, really? This person's having that problem? I wonder if that's for me too. And I removed the drone core, and all of a sudden, I didn't have as much drag. It was like nice. Um, and then these wings needed to be changed. And then I've also opted to put these tanks on the sides instead, which reduces the amount of weight that was in the plane by about 10, by about 10 tons. Uh, it also reduces the amount of fuel, but I don't think I need that much fuel, so it's probably fine. All right, we're getting lots of surface speed, lots of thrust, going higher and higher. Like to see it. And uh, we are bringing a two two things to the PISS today. We're bringing the uh, the space tug, because I didn't bring it. I didn't put it on the station when I built it. Um, and we're bringing some science modules for station science, because I need more science. So, even though we're at almost 17k, my thrust is... Well, it's actually, it's actually gonna stay here about here. But my surface speed is really climbing now. So I think once we get to about 900 meters per second surface speed, I'm going to tilt the nose up. There we go. That's good enough. Let's tilt the nose up. Let's get it up there. Come on. Now we're starting to drift a little bit because uh, the air is really thin. The wings aren't able to do as much as they were before. But you notice our apoapsis now. It's... Our apoapsis now is already 25k. Uh, surface info, orbit info. Here we go. So you can see our apoapsis right now on the orbit info window. It's already 25k, 27k, almost 28k. And close the air intakes. And there we go. So up we go. So I got to about an apoapsis of about 30,000. It's not the best I've had, but it'll do. Um, and then we'll just keep going up. Oh, I didn't even have my thrust all the way up. That's my bad. My thrust was at about 95%, which is probably why I didn't do it as well, but whatever, it's fine. So really high surface speed now. We're gonna switch to orbital velocity so I can see that. Uh, I wanna see how much delta V I have. I have it up here, but it's probably pretty small for most people. So I'm actually going to turn this one on so you guys can see this one. So this is the Delta V stats for this. Uh, right here. So you can see how much we have left. There's over 1,000 meters per second left in this thing right now. And that is 1,000 meters per second left without this tank being used. Okay, this tank is locked to keep the weight as far forward as, as possible. So we should be able to get up there pretty easily now. I'm gonna angle it up a bit more, about 40 degrees now. And when we get to an apoapsis of about 75 or so, I'll kill the engines, and we'll still continue to climb from there. We'll still continue to raise that apoapsis from there, even without the engines on, because it's a plane. Just, just the natural lift of the wings will keep us going higher. 
right, this is probably pretty good here. So we'll go ahead and stop it. And uh, we're left with 551 meters per second remaining. That's not as much as I had before, but it'll still do. It'll still be fine. Um, let's check my orbit here. Now, this gla graphical glitch you're seeing here, I'm pretty sure this is trajectories. I'm pretty sure trajectories is bugged out. And I'm going to either look at it or possibly I'm going to have to just get rid of trajectories. I don't want to do that, but I'm kind of thinking that's the thing. So, okay, I don't need this display on anymore. We need 776 or so to get into the orbit we want. Let's nose our, let's put our nose down a bit here. We could actually use some of this monopropellant to accelerate ourselves forward some more, but I'm not gonna worry about it. All right, I don't need surface info anymore. So orbit info and delta V stats is all that's required now. I could just use Kerbal Engineer, which I got Kerbal Engineer up all on the top, so. Um, I know the resolution of, that I play at is probably makes text really small for some people. Um, so I apologize for that, but um, at the end of the day, I'm not going to play in 1080p. The interface is just too big. I don't like all the interfaces. I like things clean to the side. I want to be able to see everything big, centered in my screen when I play. And having things along the outside for me to read is just the way I prefer to play it. And, you know play play the video in a higher resolution when you watch i guess i don't know it's i don't know what to tell you i'm gonna play in 1440p i'm not playing 4k i wanted to play in 4k but um some of the some of the interfaces do not scale very well unfortunately so we're going to extend our solar panels get those out so that we can have nice juicy sunlight and then we will wait our maneuver. Now it's gonna be more Delta V for this maneuver than we have available, but we have this tank, remember? So I am gonna unlock this tank um, to perform the maneuver as well. And I think I brought too much oxidizer. I'm pretty sure I did. Yeah, I definitely brought too much oxidizer this time. So I need to remember to take oxidizer out of the tanks and then will you be even lighter? and we'll be even better to get where we need to go because there's too much of it already here. We're gonna have leftovers and I don't like that. All right, so I'm missing my timing here, but that's okay. Totally screwed up my timing because I was too busy talking. Why does the station need to be tugged? Uh, the station doesn't need to be tugged um, the station needs a tug because when I build things at the station, I want to be able to move things around on the station and the tug is a great way to move things around. Um, episode 64 and 65, um, really just the whole, whoops, here we go. I gotta, I gotta activate this. There we go. Um, really just the whole, the whole episodes where I was building the station will show you the, the reason for that being necessary. Okay, so we have an apoapsis height of 120 and a periapsis height of 72. Now, I know you might be thinking, oh, that's terrible, you didn't circularize, but I want that. I want to go up to 120 because the station, if you remember, is about 125. So this puts me pretty close to an apoapsis that's already as high as we need to be anyway. So let's take a look at the map. And this is the reason why I think trajectories is the thing causing the glitches because we no longer have a suborbital trajectory so trajectories as a mod is no longer displaying. And as you can see, the glitches have gone. They're, they're not there anymore. So I'm pretty sure that's the mod that's doing it, but it is what it is. So what's our position to the station? It's not good, actually. I probably should have timed it better. Yeah, I didn't time it very well at all, but uh, you know, it's probably okay. I could just redo the flight, but that would just, That'd just be wasteful to have to orbit around, re-enter, land, and then do it again. I don't really want to do that. I should have I should have waited for this though. So this is my bad on the timing. I was just so excited to show you guys the plane that I forgot the timing. So what I could do here is since I get much better ISP with the nuclear engines that I do with these, I brought way too much oxidizer. So like there's no there's not even a need for the nerves because we're gonna run out of liquid fuel like before we even run out of oxidizer. So probably shouldn't have done that. Let's, um, yeah, I've got this much 
Let's see, we've got this much liquid fuel left, yeah. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna deactivate the broadswords. Uh, and then we're gonna activate the nerves. And then I'm thinking I might just um, perform this maneuver differently here. Um, since this is already too high, I need to get above the station so the station can catch up to me. That sucks. All right, so we're already pretty much facing prograde, so let's just kind of activate these engines really quick here. We'll just turn the engines on really quick and burn ourselves a little bit farther forward. Raise our apoapsis above the station. And then once we're above the station, the station can then catch up to us. So I think that's probably good. I want it to catch up to us like kind of now. I don't want to wait forever. So I'm gonna go up to maybe 130. That's good enough. And then at the apoapsis now, cause we'll be above the station. So at the apoapsis now, I'm gonna take and raise this to where we need to be to. What's going on here? Get rid of these maneuvers. Set the PIS as his target. And then I want to add a maneuver here. And I want to, yeah, at the apoaps. Let's just raise this to be, I hope it doesn't take too much delta V. No, it'll be fine. Yeah, it'll be fine. So we'll raise that to about there. That should allow the station to catch up to us in a reasonable amount of time, I would think. It's going to cost us 47, delta, 47 meters per second. Not a big deal. So we'll be fine there. We have local control. Uh, we also have the flight computer. I think there's like a built-in... Oh, wait. No, we have probes. We have a probe in our, uh, in our payload. We have two probes in our payload, which is why we have the flight computer. So I could actually just tell the plane to face the node and execute. That's what I'm going to do, actually. Uh, let's bring up, let's keep the Delta V stats. Um, hold on. Keep the Delta V stats. I have them here. Uh, I have them right here on the screen. But like, like I said, it's probably harder for people to read that than it is for them to look at this window here. So I'll leave the Delta V stats up here for you guys. Probably like right here. Although I do like them on the left side more because that's just where I naturally look for my information. So I'll leave them here. And then uh, we'll let this plane kind of perform the maneuver. We'll rendezvous with the station, and then we'll drop off the payload. It's actually, the, the scimitar was quite difficult to dock to the station because it's a really massive plane with a regular docking port on the front. And so you have to have the whole plane aligned perfectly, like directly centered up. You can't be angled at all. And even then, it takes a bit for those magnets to truly line up where they need to be. Um, so the... The scimitar is a pretty difficult plane to dock. I don't think, I don't really need to dock it though. I just need to get close to the station. I don't need, I mean, I can dock it if you want me to, but I don't need to. I'll, I'm just dropping off a payload and these two payloads can drive themselves. They're self-propelled. They're gonna, they're gonna propel themselves to their position. So it's not a really big deal. Uh, I don't need to dock to the station. I'm also gonna drop Dylan off, he's a medic. I'm gonna drop Dylan off into the, uh, the medical bay on the on the station as well can the plane go to minmus it would need to i would need to reduce the cargo bay by one so the cargo bay has to be reduced um by one to make it lighter um it would also be less liquid fuel but there's also be a lot less oxidizer on the plane too so it'd be fine um and then i would need to refuel what was going on there it's red oh it's because i had the dylan highlighted it's like showing me where Dylan is. I get it. Okay. So I wanted to execute that maneuver. Uh, I should be able to disable these engines, but apparently my mode is just toggle. So, okay then. It's fine. They're in air breathing mode now, so they're not going to do anything. I switched them to their air breathing mode. So they can't do anything. So really the only thing that's going to be pushing this plane forward is the uh, the nerves. Which, you know, it's it's fine. It's kind of inefficient because of all the extra oxidizer we're hauling. 
I, I need to I need to fix that. I need to remember not to do that. Um, but it's probably fine actually. If I if I would have actually taken this docking, if I would have taken this bay out, then we would have had less oxidizer. But we would have also had a lot less liquid fuel. Maybe I could switch this cargo bay to more liquid fuel. That's a good option actually. That would give me more delta V. That would give me significantly more if I just made this only liquid fuel. I think I'm gonna do that. It would make that cargo bay lighter too. So that's actually not a bad idea too. See, I'm getting getting little tweaks as we go. You gotta test and tweak, you know? Okay, let's accelerate time a little bit here. Uh, we got seven minutes till the maneuver. Whew. Yeah, so just if you're just joining us, this is a modified version of the PII Scimitar, which we were using, um, well, we were using it during the course of building the PISS and um, in the Conquering Kerbal Space Program series. I am assuming that everyone watching this live stream is, has watched the series or has been watching the series before. I just assume that. Um, but, you know, if, you, if you're just joining me, you just happen to stumble on the stream, you may not know what's going on. Um, so... Uh, I do a space pro a Kerbal Space Program game series, basically a Let's Play series on YouTube called Conquering Kerbal Space Program, uh, where our mission is to put a self-sufficient and fully operational base on every single uh, stock planet. I have to say stock planet because I, I have a planet pack installed, um, and the mission parameters initially did not have that planet pack installed. I added it in the middle of, well, I added it as of episode 10 when the game crashed i took the opportunity of my game my save file being corrupted i took that opportunity and decided to spice it up a bit so um. come on maneuver node all right. 16 seconds to maneuver i'll let this i'll let this focus itself let's also turn the rcs on so i can make sure it can do its thing we have lots of monopropellant it's all stored in, uh, I don't think it's stored in the cabin, is it? Yeah, there's 260 stored in the cabin, but there's two extra tanks uh, attached right within the cargo bay up here too. So I could also, I've been thinking about also removing some of these parachutes. I've got three of these big parachutes. Each one of these things weighs like 0.8 tons, like each. If I reduce these, the number of parachutes I have to like just maybe these two, or sorry, just this, these two and these two instead, um, it would do, it would, you know, it, it take away almost two tons of weight so there's still places i can shed weight um i was gonna do just one back fin but if i do only one i get side slip it's like it, it gets really squirrely in the upper atmosphere around 18k or so it starts getting really squirrely adding an extra one like this just like i have with the scimitar before it solved that problem i don't know it just doesn't do it anymore so it's cool I watched the whole series, still forgot what PISS stands for. It stands for the Prior Interstellar Space Station. It's Prior Interstellar Incorporated is the private space organization that is behind the space program that we're doing here. It's, um, the, the flag I have, you can see the flag. I made, a new, I made a new flag, a new logo. That's what PII is, Prior Interstellar Space, or Prior Interstellar Incorporated. So it's, the space station is, yeah, I, I didn't, I didn't do it on purpose for the purposes of naming the station, but as soon as I developed the name for what I wanted the space program to be, I said, oh yeah, we're totally going to have piss. <laughs> so, yeah. There was another, somebody else told us to do the Duna space station. It'd be like, you know, D, the D-I-S-S. Okay, we could do that. Let's go ahead and quit this. I don't need that maneuver anymore. It's gonna do really, really silly things. So we are completely above the station now. Uh, the station should be catching up us or catching up to us. It's probably not gonna happen very fast. What's our relative velocity to this? I bet it's not gonna catch up to us very quickly at all. Uh, well, it's pretty fast. It's gonna take a long time. Yeah, it's gonna take a long time. Now, I, I didn't anticipate this being a thing. Like, I didn't want to like wait for the station to catch up to us like this because it's gonna be quite a while of waiting around. Yeah, I didn't time that well at all. I was so excited to show you guys the plane that I just decided to go instead of just, if I just would have waited on the runway and time warped for like 10 minutes, 
the space station would have been in the right spot and then we could have just got there quickly, but my bad. It shouldn't take more than like, you know, five or six revolutions. I wouldn't think five or six orbits. Um, but this gives me a chance to talk to you guys in the, uh, in the comments. Does the tug look similar to the old one? Yes, it does. It's exactly the same model. It's exactly the same design. Um, it's actually the same subassembly. I just transferred the subassembly from the old save to the new save and then swapped out. Well, first I swapped out a part because it was a USI part that wasn't compatible anymore. Um, first I swapped out a part. Then I uh, took that subassembly and the save file for that craft and brought it to the new save. So uh, it is the exact same thing. So I'll show you guys the cargo because we're, we're sitting here waiting around this. We might as well show you guys the cargo. Uh, let's go ahead and slow this down one time speed. I love that sun flare. This Astronaki sun flare is just my favorite sun by far. I just love it. It looks so bright. It just looks so, it just looks like it has so much energy. It's just great. It's just great. Okay, let's open up the cargo bay. Then I'll speed up time again. So we can go 100 times speed because of our altitude. Um, so you can see this, um, well, in the camera here, this is the, the tug we have coming up. It's the same model as before. So if you've seen the series, you already know this, but it features two monopropellant tanks and two fuel tanks. Now, the reason why the tug has fuel is because I wanted a tug that had a great amount of authority over really heavy things, things with a lot of mass. Um, and so, this tug actually features two sky cranes attached to it. This sky crane opens with its engines facing that direction, so it will push it that way. Uh, basically, relative to where the display is showing you right now, one will, one will open up with its engines facing to the right and push it to the left. The other does the opposite. And um, now my dog is going to bark. And my dog is going to be an ass. I apologize for that. There's nothing I, I honestly, there is nothing I can do about that. That is annoying. It's like, aside from getting her a shot collar when she barks, I can't do anything about it. And I'm really hesitant to do that because I don't, I don't want to punish her for things that are like her instincts. You know, it's almost like, I, I, I just don't feel like conditioning my dog to be punished when she does something that's instinctual to her, like who she is, you know? I, I just, it frustrates me that she barks all the time, but she's barking at a noise outside. So it's not like she's barking at her own shadow. I just wish she wouldn't do it all the time, especially when I'm trying to record. Um, anyway, back on topic, it also features some lights. So we have a good view of things as we're approaching it and going towards it. It's got model propellant supply, all that stuff. But because of the engines, I think each one of these engines has something like 200 kilonewtons of thrust or something. So it can grab a hold of something really heavy and push it and pull it. Um, without much effort, as long as it's got the fuel. And I don't actually think it has any fuel in it now. It doesn't, because my plane, let's actually, let's actually fix that. Let's um, time warp this back down. Uh, the plane actually used up the fuel supply in the payload while it was in orbit. So I'm gonna transfer some of this fuel, some of this oxidizer to these engines. Let's just grab this tank. No, I want both of the tanks, please both of these tanks, and I want you to transfer into this tank. So we'll suck the oxidizer out of the plane because we don't need it anymore, you know? It's just weighing us down, so. What kind of dog do I have? Um, so I grew up my whole life, I've had a golden retriever. Um, I've actually had two golden retrievers. I out, Obviously, because of the, how old dogs live, I outlived my first one. Um, my parents got a golden retriever for me when I was like two not for me, it was for everyone. Everyone wanted a dog, but they always said it was my dog, right? It was, this is Charlie's dog. Um, but I had a golden retriever and it was awesome having a golden retriever. I loved it. Um, and then the second one, one, once the first one, the first one did, dogs have this thing where it's almost, it's almost spooky. Dogs have this thing where they kind of know that they're going to die. They kind of know that they're getting to, to the end of their life. And when they, I don't want to say they're ready to die, but when they're really like prepared for it or they think it's going to happen, they run away. Like they'll just go off and run away, away from you. I don't know why they do that. I, I don't, I haven't researched it, but I, I know that this is something that a lot of dogs do. And mine did that. It, it, she was, he was really old. He was like, tw 
uh, 12 and a half for 13 years old. And, um, you know, it wasn't in the best of health in the world. My first golden retriever was more of an outside dog. We called them outside dog dogs that primarily live outside. Um, we had a dog house for him and he had a, like a pretty decently sized penned area so that he couldn't run away and he still had a lot of movement ability, but for the most part, he stayed outside. Um, so 12, 13 years old for an outside dog is pretty good. Um, my second golden retriever that I lived with was an indoor dog. Um, and we got the second one pretty close to the first one go passing away uh, or running away, I guess. I assume he passed away shortly after running away. Um, is this all good? Yeah, so all the oxidizer is now in here. I'm gonna save the liquid fuel. You know that kind of makes this pointless, but eventually I'll bring liquid fuel to this. I just wanted the oxidizer out of the plane. So there we go, it's gone now. Anyway, so my second dog was a golden retriever as well. And the thing about golden retrievers is they shed like a lot, they shed a lot. And um, one of the things my wife didn't want was a dog that sheds. It's just like, don't, I don't want any shedding. She grew up in a completely different country, but they had a little dog, like one of those little lap dogs. I'm not really a lap dog person, just, I'm not. I mean, yeah, okay, cool, they're they're cute and all that stuff, but it's it's just not for me, all right? I want a, I want a bigger dog. I, I'm, a, I'm a dog, I'm a guy that likes dogs a lot, um, but I want one that I can wrap my arms around, you know? I want one that I can uh, uh, play catch with and not have to worry about hurting the dang thing, you know? So, like, that, that's what I, I wanted another golden retriever because it, it was really great to have. And, um, she didn't want one that sheds. Well, golden retriever is out of the question then. So, we were looking for breeds of dogs that don't shed. Poodle came up. I'm not a big fan of poodles, but, you know, the wife wants what the wife wants. So we had a compromise because I told her I didn't want a poodle. And she's like, well, I don't want a golden retriever. So we got a golden doodle. And that's what I have as a dog. I have a golden doodle. Um, if you want to see what it looks like, I can make my, actually, if I make my webcam really big right now, don't, I don't want to scare anybody here, but if I make my webcam really big right now. You can see right here is actually a picture of the dog. It's barking. So. Um, when I get a new office, that picture will no longer be behind me, but that just happens to be where we have that picture. So it is what it is. <laughs> anyway, so there you go. That's the type of dog. I know it's a really long answer, but we've got some time to burn while we're waiting for this thing to get to rendezvous with the station. So I felt like, you know, kind of had to happen. Yep. So I want to rendezvous with the station now. I could just actually, I could just do this so I don't miss it because I'd hate to like get lost in conversation and miss it. So I'm going to open up MechJev's Maneuver Planner. I'm going to tell it to create a node and execute. And this should give me, yeah, one day, three hours and 17 minutes. Okay, so we'll just let MechJev execute this maneuver. I need to turn the, I need to turn that off. Let's uh, remove this node. Create, <clears throat> sorry, create and execute. There we go. So it'll get itself in position and it'll just do its thing now. That way I don't have to, uh, I don't have to worry about missing the maneuver. Um, and MechJeb I think will also uh, manage my time acceleration as well, I think. So that'll work out really well. I want to see your golden doodle, Charlie. Yeah, well, um, uh, she is way in the kitchen and or over in the living room sitting on the couch probably. She likes to hang out on our couch, which uh, that was something that my parents never let our dogs do. They still don't. Um, my parents, when I lived with them, obviously growing up, um, uh, the dogs we had were never allowed on the couches because that's where people sit. Um, I don't know if it's an old fashioned thing, probably had a lot to do with them shedding and not wanting the hair all over the couches, which totally understandable, not wanting the hair all over the furniture. Um, but I mean, you, if you sit in my living room, <clears throat> excuse me, the living room floor of my parents' house, you just sit on the floor for like a couple of, like a minute, you get up and you're going to have to brush yourself off just because the dog shed. That's what they do. They vacuum like twice a day. It's just, eh, I guess I don't want to deal with it. My wife, my wife was right on that. We don't want to deal with that. But, um, yeah, anyway, um, mine, <clears throat> excuse me, guys, I don't know, 
My throat, man. It just happens. Hey, yeah, no. What's Mike Jeb? Mike Jeb, what are you doing here? You gonna get on the maneuver or not? Here, let's shut this off. Maybe this will help you. It keeps using its RCS to get in position, and it keeps moving its maneuver. Come on now. There we go. All right, it's in time warp now. It'll do its thing. So anyway, that's what um, that's my story of dogs, and that's where Tesla is. Her name is Tesla, named after Nikola Tesla for being very smart because the Golden Doodle is very smart. Um, she also has a lot of energy, um, so it works really well for Tesla Motors as well. Although I'm I'm sad to admit that she's not emission free. <laughs> But still, that's our that's our joke. We say it all the time. Anyway, so uh, yeah, sorry about the wait on this, but it gives us time to chat. I suppose that's probably fine. I can read your comments and stuff, and uh, you know that's cool. I can hang out with you guys. I don't get to hang out with you guys a whole lot. I'm usually like super focused on the content, super focused on the game, and you know like like Subnautica or any of the other live stream stuff I do actually what I probably should do is I probably should do the rest of the Outlast series live cuz I'm just not finding the time to record it I'm just I'm trying to find the time trying to find the moment to do it and it's just not happening every time I sit down and I'm like I'm going to do it right now something comes up or something calls or and I end up reverting my time resources later on to a different series like right as soon as this stream is done i'm gonna go record more mass effect because i have to maintain my quota for that that i want to do um so it's like i don't know <laughs> um, and i i, I would have had a kerbal episode up already but there was so much planning for this base that i wanted to make sure i got it right that i thought rather than having people wait a couple of weeks for any kerbal content at all I might as well just do these live streams and give people Kerbal content and give them and show them what I'm up to and show them how much work goes into pr preparation for this type of stuff by just doing it live. And so I hope you guys are okay with that. I hope you guys are liking this. Judging by how many concurrent viewers the KSP streams keep getting, um, you know, it is still by far the most popular game on the channel and I still... Uh, it's still my favorite game on the channel. It still is. I put, I know it, I put a lot more time into other series as it seems, but this is still my favorite game on the channel. And, um, you know, up until recently, I haven't been able to really record anything for it and I wanted to grow the channel. So I was doing other things, but, um, if I can do outlast live, I, I will. Uh, the only problem seems to be, I feel like this is going slow. <laughs> There's still a day left until this maneuver happens. But we are doing one minute per second, so um, it's reasonable to assume then that we should have this maneuver execute in about seven to eight real real life minutes. So you got about six six to eight minutes in real life time, I think. A carbon day is six hours, so that would mean six minutes to do a day. So yeah, this maneuver should take place in about six to seven minutes. So anyway, <clears throat> um, what do we got here? Did I deliver the tug yet? You're back. <laughs> so Niles, welcome back. Um, basically, I was so excited to show the plane to people. I'm so excited to like get that up in the air that I didn't bother looking at the positioning of my target, and I ended up getting in get ended up getting into orbit with like like way out of position. So I have to orbit a whole bunch of times for the station to catch up to us. It's not a huge deal. It's not like, it's not like, it's not gonna hurt me at all. I'm not, I don't, I don't really care that much. Um, it's given me time to hang out with you guys and talk for a bit, so. Looks like the mod has spoke. The mod has spoke. Uh, what's, the, what's the deleted message? <laughs> Give me a shout out, please. Oh, I don't do shout outs by request. I'll, I'll do shout outs for people who have done something to deserve a shout out, but I'm not gonna like, uh, I just did, hi aviator. <laughs> like, I don't care, is that, I don't pay attention to that stuff because it's just like, why, I don't, okay, sure. Yeah, fine. Um, if it was like your real name, I could understand, or if it was like your business, I could understand, but like some, some username that's not really all that easily identifiable to you I don't know. I guess I'm just not 
it's just not something I do. I guess I, I can understand why some people might want it, I guess, but I, it's not something I do. But anyway. Uh, so anyway, uh, Niles, a.k.a. Um, wow, that's Putin. Ha. Ha. I didn't remember the connection. Uh, if you're not on the Discord already, you should join it. Um, the Discord, we have we have fun there. We have talks there. I hang out there quite a bit, usually, if I'm not sick. I was sick all day yesterday. It was just like... Like I was in, it was I was in bed sick, like I'm not waking up. I took my son to daycare still because that's just the good the good dad thing. But I came right home and just crashed. I woke up at 11:30. I tried to eat something, didn't happen. My stomach didn't like me. Dealt with that situation, if you know what I mean. And then went back to bed at like one. Woke up again at 2.30, did the same thing. Went back to bed at 3, woke up at 6, did the same thing. It's just, it was awful. It's just absolutely awful. I don't know what it was. I think it's food poisoning or something, maybe. I don't know. It's, um... I don't know what it was, you know? It's... Oh, well. Enough about these problems. Let's see the frame rates near the station, shall we? I'm, I'm actually interested to see what the frame rates will be near the station. Um, the station that we have now in orbit has almost the same amount of parts as the old station did. Um, there used to be a lot less parts, but because I added all of those recyclers on it, those recyclers are basically, there's more recyclers than there were struts. So, um, you know, there's more parts on the station now, I think, than there was last time. Once the tug is once the tug is at the station, that that definitely will be true. But um, I am interested to see what the frame rates are. Before, if I got a craft like this, which actually this vessel, this plane that we're driving right now, has 60 more parts. I think is it 60? 50 more parts? Yeah, you guys can hear behind me probably. Maybe not. But there's the garbage man behind us, behind me. Let's close. I'll close the uh, cargo bay because I don't really like it open. It's not a big deal to have it open. Oh, and then you guys might be wondering what this is. This is our second, our second version of our payload, our second bit here. This is our our science module. Basically, it's a it's a bunch of science experiments that we're going to be using with the stations with, to do science on the station. Um, this is with the station science mod, so this is not something you'd normally have in stock KSP. But it allows us to do research on various different like particle accelerations. Like with a, we have a we have an in orbit particle accelerator. Um, we have two of them actually um, on the station, and uh, we can do science with those. We can there's prograde quarks, there's retrograde quarks, and eccentric quarks. And then we also have creature comforts, which is going to take advantage of the zoology bay. We have animals on our station as well. Um, then we have plant growth. It's pretty self-explanatory there. And then we have something called quark bioactivity, which I think is a combination of a few different things that relate to the animals as well as the plants and things. So, um, but yeah, so this this thing can manage itself though. It flies itself over and docks itself. So I don't need to worry about doing anything with that. And then this is also obviously gonna fly itself as a tug. So not a big deal. It's gonna be fine. We have about one minute until the, this maneuver executes. Then we should be in good shape. Let's see where we are. Yep. So here's the station. It's catching up to us slowly but surely. And eventually we'll have a maneuver that takes us and gets us to be right about here. It's gonna rendezvous us right about there, which is actually pretty nice. We're gonna rendezvous in the daylight still. That's good. We might have to dock in the dark. I'm not. Well, actually, it might be this. This is 3.7 kilometers away here, and I'd actually I would much rather I would much rather rendezvous here because this puts us in daylight the whole time. So I would much rather rendezvous here, even if it's even if it's a little further away. I'm still fine with that. It is a little further away, but I think it's probably I think it's probably a better place to rendezvous, just because it's it's in the daylight the whole time. So, yeah, so we did about, I think we did about, what, 11? It takes, what is it, 24 minutes to orbit Kerbin at 70 kilometers? Is that what it is? So at 120, it probably takes more like 30 minutes. So maybe two revolutions per hour. And we had a day, so we did about 12 revolutions. That's, if, that's, if that math is accurate. 
which it might not be or it might be, I don't know. Okay, let's turn the RCS on, make sure it can get on its get its on its marker. And then we'll uh, let MechJib take it from here. It's only seven meters per second, like whatever, it's fine. Frame rates are already a little bit shameful. But it's fine. All right, so. Yeah, we still have 175 to spare, so we're fine. Even with the access, even with all that access oxidizer on, on board, we still have 174 left to go. If I didn't have the oxidizer, whoops, hang on. What are you doing, Mech Jeb? Quit it. Get out of here. Goodbye. You're messing up, I know it. Doing this small adjustment puff that you're doing. Okay, so let's see what we ended up with. We ended up with uh, 3.2 kilometers here and 4.3 kilometers here. Well, that's fine. I'm good with that. 4.3 is fine with me. Can I get that to be... Eh, can I get that to be any closer? If I do another maneuver like here or something, can I... See, what's the difference here? Where are we at? We are a little bit... Uh, we're a little bit outside, so we'd have to come in. A little bit. On the burn. Is that how that works? 4.4... 4. 4, uh, 4.8, so outwards then. Come outwards then. And then what about like slightly uh nah, I don't think we're making this much better. Would have liked to have made it much better, but four point two, that's not worth it. So we'll just we'll just do it the old fashioned way. Well, it's all the old fashioned way, but we'll just do it when we get closer to it. Uh, I'm going to close this cargo bay because I just don't like it open while I'm doing maneuvers. So, All right, let's open up the old smart ass. And uh, I want to space target re relative velocity. And then we're going to cut the monopropellant usage because there's no reason to do it. Let's get closer to this thing. Why don't I have a target indicator on this? Yeah, we're really high. Well, we're gonna get closer to this anyway. So we're eventually gonna be, it said, we're gonna be 3.2 over there, but um, this is 4.3 kilometers away. That's what it said. So where is the station at? It's over there. There it is, so. Okay. Right there. Now, I had this thing happen to me and I was freaking out because I thought it was another bug, but it was like this, right? And I was like, where's my station? And I could see it, but it, like, it wasn't giving me the highlight, right? If you get this to where it's like not giving you the mouse over and not giving you that highlight, it's probably because you bumped F4. So if you hit F4, it'll bring that little box up on you for you again. I, I was like, I think that might have been even what happened with our station uh, on Minmus in the last, was it episode 84 or something, like before we, before we quit, where I was like, where's my station? Where's the station? And it was like, I don't know where the base is. Um, I think that's what happened. All right. Let's kill off some of this relative velocity. I am probably going to want to take and keep an eye on my Delta V stats here. Just to make sure I'm not... I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm fine, but... Let's make sure, huh? Frame rates are not impressive. But then again, I am also streaming this, so it's fine. I was actually going to incorporate some of this footage into the episode, but I don't really think it's necessary. 
I think if people want to see stuff, they can watch the streams and just to recap to tell them like, hey, I did this. Like, you've already seen me do it in the episode, so I did that same thing again. And there will be other missions with this plane. I actually want to get the other cargo bay for the plane. There's a ventral cargo bay, which opens from the bottom. And I want to get that. So I was thinking of actually delivering a lot of my Minmus base modules, delivering it by plane. I thought that might be kind of cool. But I'm not sure it's the best decision, but I'm kind of thinking it might be kind of cool. All right, let's kill off this velocity here. And we'll make our approach towards the station from here. I'm not entirely sure. Why don't I use MechJet features like rendezvous planner and auto docking when you're attending ship? Because I don't want to cheat. I mean, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think anything badly of people who want to use the autopilot stuff. I just don't want to. Um, I want to do it myself. I will. The things that I can do myself that are really simple stuff, like keep me pointed at that point. That's something where I should be able to tell a pilot to do that, and the pilot should be able to take care of that. Um, so, like, I'm not a big deal. If, if I could normally do it with standard SAS controls, I'll let MechJip do it. You know, if I could normally tell the flight computer to execute a maneuver, I'm okay with MechJip doing that because it's not a difficult thing to do. But the things that are the things that require attention and, and precision and, and navigation, right? The things that require a little bit of effort there, um, skill. Those are things I want to do myself. Um, I just prefer to. I'm, I don't think anything bad of people who do it, but um, I just choose not to. So that's just that's just it. You know. Uh, let's see. I think we're probably getting pretty close here. Yeah, three point five. God, these nerve engines are so weak. So weak. So I need to reposition. Oh, there it is. <laughs> it's like, where'd it go? It's up there. I wasn't paying attention. Reposition ourselves or myself a little bit here. Wow, where's where's the indicator? The indicator is gone. Okay then, point at the target then. I don't know where the indicator is. It says I'm going like 0.7 meters per second away from this thing, but I don't see where the indicator is. Is my camera in a bad spot? I probably should move it just a hair over so you can see that. Probably. Probably. All right, so there's the target indicator. We'll go, we'll go towards the target then. Uh, they are the stock nerves, yeah. 60 kilonewtons of thrust each. <laughs> Good ol'. I got 120 kilonewtons of thrust after getting up to space at 4,000 kilonewtons of thrust. So it's it's a pretty big change. <laughs> but they have an 800 ISP, so I'm going to use them. I'm going to use them. <clears throat> if we take our time, we take our time. This is our frame rates without being in physics range, so I'm... I don't know what it is, but I would say it's probably close to maybe 15. Maybe? Yeah, maybe maybe faster than that. I wish I could tell, like without the steam overlay. I don't have the steam overlay on. And I don't want to install a mod just to tell me that kind of stuff, but. Okay, clearly that's not the right. Clearly I'm not oriented properly for this. Let's get ourselves oriented properly for this. There's like no change happening at all here. It'll take some time. But yeah, doing the difficult stuff, that's exactly what he said, yeah. Uh, doing the difficult stuff is part of the fun. That's thats thats why I play the game, is to solve problems and to, you know, solve engineering problems, but also to just, it's just the joy of, I don't know, just managing the things you build, you know? Like if I, I could build something cool and I could say, okay, computer, go. This is the reason why I don't use KOS. This, I, I don't 
I don't want to do that. I don't want anything to do with writing scripts to let the computers do it for me. I want to do it myself. I understand the argument for using KOS. I don't think anything poorly of people who use KOS. Quite the opposite, actually. I'm very impressed by people who can use KOS because I can't. I can't write scripts like that. No way. But um, I could if I put time into investing and in, invested time into learning, but I'm not going to do that. I have enough things to learn. I have enough things to do. Um, Got to budget my time and writing scripts for, for crafts and KSP when I can easily fly them myself, easily in quotes. Um, it's just, I think, yeah, like, not interested. All right, come on now. Kill this velocity. Might be a bit too far away to kill it completely. Get yourself over there, come on. Yeah, we're drifting a little bit. I think we're a little bit too far away to kill it completely, but... Come on now, why aren't you... You got mono propellant, and I got the RCS on. Use it. <laughs> what are you doing here, Mech Jeb? Let's go. Do I not have... Confused, do I not have enough RCS thrusters on this? Do I need stronger thrusters, or what? Maybe I need stronger thrusters. Maybe it's just too heavy. I thought it would be fine, but I don't think so. Apparently not. They just flat out won't. All right, we'll turn the thrusters off. Can you just do it with reaction wheels then? Why aren't you getting lined up? Get lined up with that indicator. Come on now. Where's the station? Not going away from us, is it? It's over there. All right, face that target. Come on now. Get yourself pointed over there. To do this manually just because. I'm going to use the RCS thrusters and adjust our vector to where the retrograde marker is directly on top of this thing, and then if I use the thrusters to get the retrograde vector on top of the target indicator, then I can just do both of them at the same time. Come on now, get down there. Got that mono propellant, that's what we got it for. Come on. That'll do it. Now get yourself lined up. And we're just gonna kill both birds right now. How about that? Okay. Apparently that's not gonna be good enough, but whatever. There we go. Get over there. Might have to go kind of fast here. We're a little bit further away than I wanted to be, but. And I have to keep the mono propellant for some reason. I have to keep it flowing this way because we're going too far away from the target otherwise. It's kind of annoying. Okay. 11 meters per second is all I'm willing to spend here. So I'm going to speed up a little bit. Until we're closer. Okay, right about here is fine. Let's turn the RCS back up to bring ourselves back over where we need to be. Come on now. Not going to adjust for me, are you? Not going to do it, are you? Come on now. Nope, you don't really care. You're just like, nah. Not gonna bring you up. Doesn't seem to matter how much I expend here. I think I need stronger thrusters. I had the blisters on the on the scimitar. The really big, really powerful ones. And this was one of the reasons why I wanted those big and powerful ones. I opted for the smaller, cheaper ones here. 
because I thought it would be unnecessary to have the bigger, stronger ones. And apparently I'm wrong. I think the blisters are the better fit here. Okay, well, let's kill the velocity and go closer again. We're, we're drifting too far now. I can't get my prograde vector to line up, so... I was kind of hoping that I could just RCS this back into position, but I can't, so... Okay, we'll turn myself back. We're still not in physics range. I need to get in physics range at least. But, uh, yeah, if you're just joining, John, welcome to the stream, man. I, I don't know how long you've been here, but um, good to see ya. <laughs> uh, Houston, Kerman, we have a problem. Houston? Houston. Yes. Houston, Kerman. Is, th is that a person? Doesn't look like the SAS is trying to turn you more like push you in a direction. Exactly. That's exactly what I wanted. I wanted the SAS to push me. Um, the uh, RCS. I wanted it to push me. I was trying to move the prograde velocity vector onto the target indicator so that basically I would be pushing myself sideways so that my trajectory was heading straight for my target without having to rotate my craft and cancel velocity and do it again. I don't want to do that. So I was trying to move the indicator, but. Apparently my thrusters are too weak and my speed, my current direction, my current velocity in a certain direction is too strong to where it's not having a big enough impact. If, I'm, if I was going slower, it would have a bigger impact, but I'm going too fast for it to matter. So that's why it's not working. So let's kill off our speed again. This is about as close as we can get right now. So we'll kill off the speed again. And we'll try again. We'll go a little slower this time, I think, because that way I can just use the RCS and line me right in. I don't have to worry about this this little tiny stuff all the time. See like see the velocity vector it's it's moving. So I'm not able to keep up with it. I'm not able to move with it because it's going to move away from me. So if I just point to target now, it should be fine if I just point to target now and just go. But I'm going slow enough to where I can use the RCS to put my velocity vector on top of the target indicator and then when I push forward, I'm both reducing my speed and heading towards the target at the same time in one in one thrust. So that's what I'm trying. That's what I'm going to try and do. So for those of you who may not play KSP yourselves, might be wondering what I'm talking about. The nav ball is how you drive your ships. You don't drive with the camera. The camera can be looking at anything in any orientation. It doesn't matter. You don't use the camera. You use the nav ball. And so, like when I'm trying to drive and steer, I'm not even looking at the craft. I'm just looking at the nav ball. Um, which is the thing at the bottom of the screen next to my face. And um, the purple pink indicator here that you see, that is your target indicator. That's, that's when you are facing when the when the little symbol in the center of the nav ball here is pointing directly at that pink. It means that you are pointed directly at your target. And then the other indicator, that's a retrograde indicator. That is the direction in which that, that has to do with the direction in which you're currently traveling so that yellow indicator being a retrograde one it means if i was pointing directly at that i would be pointing in the exact opposite location of the of my current velocity so it has not it has nothing to do with my where i'm facing it has to do with d relative to whatever i'm facing where, relative to whatever i'm indicating in this case my target relative to my target that is the exact opposite direction so I'm gonna turn my RCS on, and if I use my RCS controls to kind of adjust, you know, push my craft in a certain direction in space, you can see I can move that velocity vector. I can move that velocity vector all the way down here, and then I can also move it this direction, and I'm sliding my craft in a particular way so that I'm actually heading, right now I'm facing the exact opposite direction that I'm traveling, as well as, um, is as well as facing my target. So now when I burn, I'm actually killing my relative velocity while also heading towards the target. And that's the point. So now this vector is my prograde vector. This tells me exactly which direction I am. I'm currently traveling. And so if I if I quit my thrust now, if I stop the thrust, what I can do is I can do the same thing I did with the retrograde vector. I can sit here and do RCS all day and make sure that I'm always facing the target and then I'm always traveling towards the target by just moving my vector with RCS to line up with this. 
The thing is, though, that's a really big waste of resources because it's not going to stay. I'm too far away for that to actually matter. So I'm just going to do this again because I'm too far away. I need to be a lot closer to the target for this to really take effect. And I'm not close enough to it. I'm three kilometers away. I need to be closer. The thing is, it's just not, it's just not accelerating me fast enough. I really want to get closer, but it's just not letting me. So I'm going to move RCS and keep myself, keep that velocity vector on the target indicator as long as possible with RCS. And you can see the yellow text next to the nav ball. It shows target at two and a half kilometers, 2.4 kilometers, 2.3 kilometers. And it shows me a time you know, when that will happen. So this is the closest I will ever be to my target and the time it will take me to get there. So as long as that's moving down, it means I'm going to get closer to my target. And now I'm getting to the point where I'm closer. I'm getting to the point where I'm, you know, one kilometer away, two kilometers away, etc. Now I'm less than a kilometer away. So I'm going to stop this burn because it's space. So there's no brakes. So every, all of my Delta V that I exert towards it, I'm going to have to exert the exact same amount of Delta V to stop, to stop me. And that's not stop, it's just, that's relativity. I'm stopping relative to my target. So right now I'm traveling 2.4 meters per second towards my target. Um, I'm traveling a lot faster than 2.4 meters per second. I'm actually traveling uh, 2200 in orbit. So we're both traveling 2200, but relative to my target, I'm traveling 2.3 meters per second. So I'm gonna go and go to relative velocity target with MechJeb. And so MechJeb should, with this instruction, it should be turning my craft to face pretty much the exact opposite direction that it's facing now. Recover the plane, edit the RCS, wait for PIs to be in place and relaunch. Well, I would do that, but I'm already two kilometers away. I'm already going to be 900 meters away from the thing. It's, that's that's going to take way too long now. So I would I'll do that later. I'm going to make adjustments to the plane, but once I got to the point where I was confident I could get this plane in orbit and get it to the station, I stopped testing and said let's let's hit the stream. So that's basically what happened. Um, so once this is facing the exact opposite direction as I am now, I'll time accelerate to the point where I'm about a kilometer away. And then I'll start burning again to slow me down. I have to burn my rockets in the opposite direction to slow me down. You should drop your orbit by pointing to retrograde of the planet. Get below your target's orbit. Well, it's, it's no different. Whether I'm above the orbit or below the orbit, it's all the same. But I had to get above it because I was ahead of the station. I was forward in my orbit. I, I was traveling faster than the target. So I needed to get above it so that, relatively speaking, orbital orbit relatives... You get what I'm saying. Relative to my target, I needed to travel slower so that it could catch up. Which it requires, in space, to travel... To travel... Um, I'm reading your comments while I'm trying to... <laughs> I'm reading your comments while I'm trying to explain this. That's not a good idea. In terms of space goes, uh, if you have two orbits in space, two objects in space that are, have different elevations, right? Different altitudes in their orbit. In order to slow down relative to the other craft, you actually have to speed up in your orbit. You have to go prograde to, in order to slow down relative to the other craft. Uh, because that's just how orbits work. You're traveling faster the, the closer to the surface you are without factoring in atmospheric drag and things like that, of course, but yeah. All right, so I'm facing the right direction now. Let's go ahead and time accelerate. I can't, for some reason, can't do that. There we go. We should be getting in physics range now. So now we get to see this, this the, uh, get to see the frame rates. Well, look at this. This is better than expected. This looks much better than uh, one frame per second, two frames per second, doesn't it? Doesn't this look better? I think it's working a lot better, wouldn't you think? Wouldn't you, wouldn't you say? It's a new version of Unity, man. That's what it is. 
That's where it's at. Okay. Right, below orbit faster, higher orbit slower. That's relative. In relation to the target, correct. You are, your actual speed is faster, but you, you are slower relative to the target, correct. But, the thing is, the space station, when I got into space, if you're just joining the stream, you have no idea what's going on, probably, or the reason why I'm above it instead of below it. Um, I, I was so excited to get this plane in the air and to test it and to get it up into space and orbit with it that I just didn't bother to check where the station was when I took off from the landing pad or from the runway. Uh, so I ended up uh, I ended up ahead of the about 90 degrees ahead of the station's orbital path. So I wanted the station to catch up to me. That's why I came out wider. That's why I'm above the station, if you will, because I needed the station to catch up to me. All right. Now I have no idea where the docking ports are on this, but like I said before, I don't think I need to dock to this. I don't. It's not necessary to dock. Um, it's just necessary. I just want to drop the payload off. I could actually just do it from here, but I'm gonna get closer just because I want to. All right. Let's do this. All right. Higher velocity doesn't mean faster orbit. No, actually, it means the opposite. It means slower orbit. All right. All right. Orbital mechanics are so bass backwards. <laughs> All right. Let's go. Looking good here so far. Looking good, looking good, looking good. Probably go one more burn. Probably. This is good enough. Face the target. And then I think we're going to also want to move. Can I help this along to go faster? I feel like MechJeb doesn't use like 100% of your reaction wheels as power when it does things, you know? I feel like it wants to take things really slow and I just want to get there now. Come on now. I am going to want to move that velocity vector down. So let's move that velocity vector down towards the target indicator. There we go. Just like that. Perfect. Right, right there. Stay right there. You're going to move on me every single time, but I'm going to keep you right there. Oh, now you're really getting strong. You're a feisty one. Stay on that, stay on that point, please. Good enough. Is it not gonna work or what? Come on, get there. Get there. You know what, 400 meters is close enough. I don't need to dock, so. It's 400 meters is close enough for me. Let's go back to relative velocity. We'll kill it later when we get closer to the station. Can I not do it? Oh, there it goes. All right, catching up to station. I was only commenting because you were really brute forcing the orbit change once you got close. Yeah, I was brute forcing it because I'm lazy. <laughs> That's why I'm just like, I don't want to think about it. I'm just going to use raw power. It's not a lot of power. Should have should have packed more power <laughs> to my raw power. How does going faster equals a slower orbit? Uh, okay, so picture it this way, right? Let's assume you're on a racetrack, okay? Um, and like a NASCAR racetrack. And let's say the road that you're on is, I don't know, 
100 meters wide, okay? So you've got race cars going down this 100 meter wide road. You have to make a sharp turn, okay? Now, the guys on the outside, they're, the angle that they have to turn at, right? That, that, that curve that they're doing is not as extreme as yours on the inside. They can go at higher speed. However, on the inside, at lower speed, you can actually whip around that corner faster. So your speed on the inside is your, your actual travel, your velocity on the inside of the, of the corner is slower than the one on the outside. But you're able to get around the corner faster because you have less distance to travel. If you're talking about relativity, take the, take the fact that there's a road completely out of the equation, you and the other car are standing still. Okay, you're, you're still going around the road, but just don't factor that into this anymore. You and the car are standing still. You're going the exact same speed. But relative to him, you are now pulling ahead of him because you were able to get around the corner faster. So you have a higher orbital velocity. You see what I'm saying? Orbital period. You have a lower orbital period in the system. You, you're able to orbit faster. You're able to go around the corners faster. That's a faster orbit. It's a lower velocity, lower orbital velocity. No, you, you get what I'm saying, right? I'm mixing up the terms right now because I'm in a live stream, but you get what I'm saying though, right? It's you're able to go around faster by going a slower speed because you're on the inside and you have to go a slower speed on the inside because the planet is constantly pulling you with gravity. It's constantly pulling you towards it at the same consistency, right? It's always gonna be, well, one G, but it's always pulling you towards it. And so the slower you are going, the less you can escape its pull. So you're gonna be in, you're gonna be further closer to the planet the slower you're going. When you increase your speed, you're able to go faster in that direction, right? So I'm pointing towards you now. You're able to, I'm gonna be able to go faster towards you, which means the earth isn't able to pull me, or in this case, Kerbin, isn't able to pull me as much towards it. Therefore, I'm able to get further away from that planet. So the faster I go, the wider my orbit. But relative to other things that didn't increase, right? It's kind of a weirdly weird thing because if I was standing right next to you, if we're connected, right? Let's say you could test this yourself in Kerbal Space Program. Dock two vessels together like this, right? Just have one behind the other. Undock them so they're going the exact same speed and the exact same orbital period and everything is exactly the same about them. Then take one craft and accelerate 100 meters per second. Just, just 100 meters per second that way, right? And you'll notice that when you get to the other side of the planet, the other one is the one that's ahead, right? The other one is gonna go ahead. So we take, take this one, go 100 meters per second forward. When you get to the other side of the planet, do it again, go 100 meters per second forward. That craft has traveled 200 meters per second forward twice, one on each side of the planet. Its orbit is now wider, but the second craft that didn't accelerate, it will get ahead. It will, it will be ahead of that other vessel because relative, relative its orbit, it is now able to go around faster. I'm hoping that makes sense. I, I'm butchering the terminologies. I'm gonna get roasted for it in the comments for mixing up all the terminologies, but I hope you can at least grasp the overall concept that I'm trying to say. <clears throat> Okay, so let's go, let's go time accelerate towards our mission here, shall we? <laughs> I got carried away there for a second. You got me. All right. All right, I think, honestly, this is close enough, I think. I don't think I need to get any closer than this. I, I feel like I want to, though. The thing is, I'm running out of fuel, and... Like I kind of want to land in the, I kind of want to land on the runway, and I probably can't with this low fuel. So I'm actually kind of thinking this is close enough because I don't want to spend any more fuel on it. Yeah, we're gonna go with that. So I'm going to just go ahead and get uh, our payload out, and uh, we'll just let it rendezvous with the station itself. I have to figure out where I want to dock the tug. 
I think it's just going to be the central docking node here in the center here uh, of the docking port thing. <laughs> I'm going to call it the docking center because it makes sense to me to call it that. Um, let's just let's just turn these engines on. Let's kill this kill the relative velocity to this right now. And done. Good enough. Point one. I can hand. I can deal with that. Okay. Let's go ahead and turn smart ass off really quick. Let's turn our regular SAS on. I want to bend. Not bend. Bend is a terribly terrible incorrect term. I want to tilt the craft so that my cargo bay is facing the station. It's probably good enough right about there. Yeah, that will do it. Let's All right, let's kill rotation. Kill all rotation, please. Okay, good. Turn the SAS off. Okay, now I'm going to do the tug first, I think, because it's probably the easiest one to do. Probably. Uh, let's get Mech Jeb out of the way. We don't need that. Goodbye, SAS. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, decouple this. I don't want to switch to the station. I want to switch to the tug. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> now... <clears throat> if I can clear my throat in time, what I want to do is get myself some distance away from the con away from the uh, docking bay. <clears throat> I'm gonna have such a hard time talking to record Mass Effect after this. It's such a hard time talking. All right. <clears throat> Actually, I probably can't even record Mass Effect now. My stream went longer than went longer than I wanted it to. So whatever. Uh, it's not going to be a long stream. Yes, it is always a long stream, Charlie. Just, what are you going to learn? You can't do a short one. You don't know how. <clears throat> mm, yeah, that's, that's delicious. All right. Um, let's get, well, I just need to go towards my target, but I need, a, I need a target first. Can I have a target, please? <clears throat> not going to give me the target, are you? That's the cyclotron. Oh, the docking ports are on the other side. Okay, then. Docking ports are on the other side. <clears throat> it's never going to never gonna end. I'm going to have a throat problem the whole time. We're going to have... I can't click this. <clears throat> That's weird. It's highlighting when I'm over here. Can you... Can I not highlight this? Why not? <clears throat> Hold on. Why can't I highlight this? Control from here. Why won't you let me highlight that docking port? Why not? I can't click it. Whoa, that's weird. Like, I'm clicking on the docking port from here. It's not where I'm actually pointing, but... Okay. It's not where I'm pointing. It won't let me set it as a target. Does that make sense to anyone else? I don't think so. Set as target, please. Very strange. Okay. Give me the indicators. Thank you. You know what? I don't need to worry about this whole slowing down thing. I've got enough propellant here to, to make it just brute force it. Let's go. Let's go, let's go. All right, so now we're gonna just brute force this. <clears throat> My God, will I ever have Will I ever have my throat cleared again? I just, I don't know. I honestly don't. 
I'm gonna go with no as a guess for now. All right, let's go this direction because I need to. I am a little bit further away than I kind of should be, but like I said, I want to make sure I can land it. I just want to make sure I can land, honestly. I, I don't necessarily need to land on the KSC, but I would like to actually get a good re-entry with the plane this time and actually land with the, on the wheels. So, you know. <clears throat> <laughs> now the mods are asking not so politely. <laughs> Uh, the ex Michael, the executioner. <laughs> oh, you guys, you guys. All right. Go forward a little bit further away from this than I needed to be, but it's okay. So, yeah, this is space. This is what happens in space. I could have used the engines. It would be much faster if I did, but um, I'm just not going to. I don't have the liquid fuel anyway, so never mind. Let's extend these solar panels, make sure the battery power doesn't die. I don't know why it would. It's a lot of battery power on this thing, but let's just extend them anyway, because why not? I need more Tim Allen. <laughs> yeah. Just a bit more horsepower in the chainsaw or something that shouldn't be altered that way just ev everything can have more horsepower everything where there's a will there's a way to screw it up that's the way tim allen operated off home improvement was such a great show such a great show I remember watching that growing up we would watch that like all the time i think it was on what station was that on was that tbs it wasn't like on TBS new episodes wise, but I would watch the we would watch reruns and stuff, so I think it was TBS. Anyway. Getting closer now. Way way too far away, but whatever. It's fine. It's totally fine. You guys wanted to hang out near the station with me anyway, didn't you? I think you did. Always been stuck in the past, you know? Times were good. <laughs> Times were good. I enjoy, I enjoyed my past, you know? I enjoyed my past. I got nothing wrong with my past. I like my past. I like the prospects of future more, but I like my past. I'm not gonna lie. All right. Just go this way. We have to go to the other side of the station to dock to this because that's just the way it is. I could use docking port alignment indicator, but I just don't care. Not for this. Like, it's, st it's stupid easy to dock this thing, so it's a very small vessel that is the same width as the giant docking port underneath it, so it's really easy to dock this. So I don't mind just doing it this way. Let's whip this thing around. All right, let's get this set as the target now. Thank you. And we're just going to probably want to back this up just a little bit. Well, there we go. Bring it down. Bring it down. Nice and easy. There we go. All lined up. And we'll just slide her into position. Piece of cake. 
Okay. So the the tug is now at the station. It looks a little weird there, but I used to have it like docked to the base. But because of all of these recyclers, uh, it's not on the base anymore. I'll probably put a docking port on the manufacturing facility just to kind of give it, you know, be able to do it there. It's probably fine. Now, this thing, I'm actually not confident that it has enough monopropellant to do the job I need it to do. So, let's help with, let's help with this. Yeah, the frame rate is so much better now than it was before. It's just, it's nuts. The difference is nuts. All right, let's control this. I'm actually not confident that this has adequate resources to do the job. Because of how far away I am, I'm going to have to go really slow with this one. Because the faster you go, the more resources you're going to exert. So I'm pretty sure that's what I'm going to have to do. Okay, so there's my target. And I need to obviously point towards that. But I also don't have any solar panels on this module because it's not meant to like power itself that much. Let's, let's turn this commutatron on before I get out of range. And then um, I'm just gonna turn myself, I guess, towards the, now there's a reaction wheel on this, right? Yeah, but that's gonna use more electricity. I think I have more electricity though than I do anything else. Let's move this thing to be there. And then we're going to just go forward like this. There we go. Okay, this should get me pretty much right where I wanna be. Okay, good, we have enough resources then, we're fine. I have enough. Station's gonna shift a little bit when I go to time acceleration because that's just how it happens. All right, so let's do this. Over and over and over and over and over and over. Go, go, go. I'm reading your comments too. So if I get a little silent and it's like, I don't get silent very often. I have a habit to talk a lot and probably a bad habit. Probably should just shut up and do things more often. But I don't. Speaking of sound, you guys probably want to hear the game a bit more, so let's turn the game up a bit. Okay, so this is gonna dock up there on the top of this thing. So that's where I want this to dock. Where am I gonna, how am I gonna get a view of that thing? Right here? There, that's what I want, okay. So that's my target now. So let's get ourselves to where we're actually traveling up towards that. There we go. Oh yeah, we got plenty of resources. This thing's really light, so I guess I had a lot more amount of propellant than I needed, which is good. It's always good to have more than you need. I suppose it's better than having less than you need. Okay now, why is this acting this way? Not doing what I want. Where am I? Oh, are you backwards? Hold on, turn over. I think you're backwards. Or don't turn over. Or don't do anything at all that I want, at all. I have these things balanced. I just have to learn how to drive, <laughs> pretty much. All right, here we go. That's better. 
There we go. Now we're learning how to drive. It helps when it's not backwards. I was looking at the camera again. I'd always, always look at the docking ports. Always look at the nav ball. <laughs> no, don't always look at the nav ball. Elias, thanks for the support, buddy. You're, you're too kind. You're really too kind. All right, so we're going to go. Whoa, whoa, here we go. This way, please. All right. There we go. Can we get this going directly towards the target, please? Perfect. It's a little bit crooked, but you know, these little things are really easy to dock, so you don't need to get them super awesome. You don't need to anyway. I guess you can, but you don't need to. Because they'll basically dock themselves once you get them mounted. Okay, there we go. So we've delivered the science modules for the station science, and we delivered the tug. Mission complete, as long as we can get back to base. But before we do, I'm gonna start these experiments. Let's make sure we have a scientist in the science bay. We have two scientists. We have Andre and Sam. Are they both scientists? I'm, I'm skeptical on Andre. Is Andre a scientist? Maybe it's Andre G. Is that who's in there? Well, let's take a look. Cause I know I have another Andre that's a pilot. He's in the, he's in the broadsword right now. Andre G is the, okay. So we have Sam and Andre, they're both scientists. So that's perfect. And who else, who's in the zoology bay? Is anyone in there? We have Ashley, Ashley J. Yep, she's in the science bay. Okay, so we have scientists in the facilities that we need scientists in. So let's run these experiments. We're going to start the prograde quarks experiment. We can also start the retrograde quarks experiment as well because we have two uh, particle accelerators. So we can run them both at the same time. Fun times. So let's start the cyclotrons. And the lights will light up. 85% load here and 85% load here. Perfect. And you have quarks being generated. Yes, we do. And we have some quarks being generated here as well. Great. Now the eccentric ones, I think will take too much power. I think I can't do those yet, but I think I can do the creature comforts one. It's a started experiment. We need to start research in this area, in this facility. Once we do that, we should see this is having progress done on it, I think. Maybe not. Maybe it takes a while. You know, I bet the animal one takes a while. I don't remember. It's been a while since I've done this. This one's going to be done, like, quickly. Very quickly, both of these. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now, the question is, this is almost a kilometer away now. So, like, the broadsword's been drifting. The question is, do I just transmit these and then just dump this into the atmosphere, which is what I think I want to do, or do I wait, do all these experiments, and then put them back in the sh I don't think I'm going to put them back in the broadsword, because this is just going further and further away. And like I said, I want to have fuel to land. So... I don't think I'm going to do that. So I think what I'm going to do instead is we're just going to take off with the broadsword. So let's put and close this. Uh, da, 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 close. Okay. And then we're going to EVA Dylan. Hi, Dylan. Where is he? Is he where is he eva Is it under the wheel? Oh, no. See, EVA within the... Oh, okay, so the wheel is blocking the, the doors down there. Okay, well, I'm going to have to redesign that then. Move the wheel back further. I'm going to have to move the wheel a little bit further back. Okay. Um, Dylan, where are you going, buddy? Dylan. Dylan. Go towards the PISS, please. There you go. All right. Dylan will go to the, to the medical bay. 
And then we will try, and Andre is going to try to land this plane. And then we'll call it a day on the stream. I'm already over my time. But I haven't had any clients call me. I'm all alone. I get, I get pretty good breaks from time to time. And I don't have any meetings until 2.30 my time, so I would have to go another hour before I'm actually late to any of my obligations. So, whatever. Alright, towards the station we go with our medic. Which, honestly, I don't really think it's a big deal to have this medic, but I do want to try and see, you know, if we do get Kerbal's, Kerbals who are homesick, I would like to have a medic on board fix that okay. I need healing <laughs> yeah. well the medic is there and you'll notice that we have a I have a suit mod installed that um, changes the suits depending on the classes for the Kerbals so the medics for example have this like red cross it's pretty cool right I think the red cross is cool do I have a donation link on this stream? I usually have a donation link to the Red Cross on all my live streams. Do I have one? If you click the cards in the upper right corner, do you see Do you see that there's a Red Cross donation link there? I don't remember if I set it for this. I, know I, I set it for all my events, but I don't know if I set it for my like instant go live feature, because there's two different ways to live stream on YouTube, and. The Kerbal ones I do it one way, and everything else I do the other way. And I'm not sure I don't. I'm not sure I have it. I we'll have to see. All right, let's go down into the medical bay. I think the medical bay is this building. I think it's this this unit right here. Yep, that's the medical bay. So if we could get into there, that would be great. If Dylan could, there, there we, yeah, there we go. It's a little out of control. Okay, how do I get in there? Is there a door there, or do I have to go to one of the entrances instead? I think I might need to use one of the other entrances. I thought there'd be a hatch on this module, though. I thought there would be. Maybe not. Um. Wait, are these hatches? Are these little things here? Do these count as hatches? Uh, Umber Space Industries Tundra Series. I don't think it counts as a hatch, but maybe it does. Let's take a look. No, it would have prompted me to enter already if it was. I think I have to use one of the other entrances and then merge or use one of the other entrances and then just transfer to there so okay then speaking of other entrances I don't think I actually put one of the airlocks anywhere here the tundras had their own airlock system so yeah they're actually not there's actually no hatches on the modules themselves it looks like it looks like you actually have to okay that's interesting. Well, I know I can get in through the docking ports, so... Because that's where crew is supposed to go in, but... It's just a little odd that there's no way in. I could I could get in through the zoology bay, too. So there is that hatch. But the tundra units no longer have... There's no way to get into the modules. Um, you have to use the airlock. Which I didn't install, because... Well, I didn't install it. <laughs> okay. So let's come up here. We'll just go in through the docking port. It's fine. I think it will let me in. It will let me in through the docking port, right? I guess that's one way to find out. It is a crew hatch. No, I guess you can't. Okay, then we're going through zoology. That's a that's the thing I have to correct. So I need to install an airlock somewhere for Kerbals to be able to easily get in. Otherwise, they're always going to have to go through the zoology bay, which... Well, they could go through the science bay, too. But if the science bay and the zoology bay are full, then I have to move Kerbals just to get people in on EVAs, which is not very convenient, so... 
I will need to look into figuring out where I want to install that airlock. It's not really part of my design, to be honest. All right, so let's get ourselves grabbing a hold of this here ladder. And grab it. Oh, you switched it up on me. I'm hitting F, it's like board. I hit board, it's like grab. What a jerk. All right. So Dylan is on board. Dylan is on board, and we need Dylan to go to the medical bay here. And it won't let me. There it goes. All right. So Dylan's on board. He's in the medical bay. So if any of these Kerbals become homesick, we'll just transfer them to the medical bay, and Dylan will treat them. Because I believe we have colony supplies on board. Uh, yes, we have 6880 left. I sent them with 7 or 8K or something like that, so they're already using some. Okay, then. Look at how much electric charge we're using to do these experiments, right? 337 electric charge per second. Like, we're using a ton of electricity to do these experiments on the dark side. But you know what? I have a ton of ba I have enough batteries to run everything to do a complete revolution at this at this um, al at this altitude I can do a complete revolution at this altitude um, with all equipment running without running out of power for even a minute it goes to like gets to like a thousand electric charge left or something and then it starts recharging um, okay so the prograde quarks is done we can finalize those results oh we don't get any more I thought we got more you can't do them multiple times? I thought you could do them multiple times. You have to be able to do them multiple times. Hold on, we're going to keep that experiment. Uh, we don't have any Eurekas. Forgot how to get those. Um, we'll run these prograde quarks through the spectrometon for a second. Let's do the eccentric ones. I thought you could do these multiple times. I mean, it doesn't make any sense to haul all this science equipment up here, all this heavy equipment up here, and not be able to do these experiments multiple times. That doesn't make any sense. So it might be an issue with the save file, having the experiments transferred to it. There might be a, an issue there because um, <clears throat> the awesome Fulgora, which I'm going to credit him uh, in the next episode. Um, Fulgora, I've sent him my save file, and Fulgora went ahead and um, copied over all the completed experiments from the old save file and put them into the new save file. So I don't have to worry about doing research in Kerbin's Sphere of Influence and things like that and, and cheating by getting more science by doing the same experiments I already did. They're all, they've all been transferred, but I'm, I'm wondering if that if this is the reason why. I don't remember. Let's do plant growth and we'll start the bio quarks activity too. Bio products. This is starting already, yep. Um, colonization module, there's nothing really for you to do. You're just harvesting, you're just doing your thing, and you're doing your thing. Oh. Am I running out of? S Wait, why are the why are the quarks dying? Why are the quarks dying? Do I not have enough? Hold on, can we stop these experiments? I don't think I'm allowed to stop. Well, I don't know. I don't know how it's happening, guys. I might just reset them because this is now losing. This is losing prograde quarks now. Weird. They're decaying faster than they're growing. Okay then. Well, let's try to land this plane and go home. So I need to face retrograde. Bye station. Gosh, we're almost out of physics range with this thing already. It's drifting a lot. BC, I was above the station, right? Like, I, I zeroed out my velocity, right? I zeroed it out. I'm going the exact same speed as that craft, right? 
this is going back to our orbital mechanics talk. I was going the exact same speed as that. I zeroed out my relative velocity when I got the stuff out of the cargo bay. Because I'm a higher elevation, its relative speed around the planet is still faster than me. And look, it's almost two kilometers away ahead of me now. Because I'm a higher elevation than the than the station. By about a thousand kilometers. A thousand meters, one kilometer. I'm one kilometer higher above the planet. So it's gonna go faster than me. Alright. We don't want target, we want orbital retro orbital retrograde. We out of monopropellant now? No, we have a lot less though. The monopropellant we supply we had, I guess, was coming from the tug. All right. Yeah, I know my my stream wasn't supposed to be this long, but it's KSP, so. Um, Piggybacking off of the reason why episodes take longer to produce for the channel, um, streams also take longer to get anything done. Uh, where's my Delta V stats? I want to know how terrible this is going to be by not having any. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, we're going to be tight. Really tight. What's my maneuver to get home? What's the maneuver to get home? Probably... Probably like here, maybe? That maneuver here. Now let's see what happens when I get trajectories in here. I start getting a suborbital trajectory on this mod. I wonder if I'll start getting those graphical glitches again. Interesting. It's not gonna show me or what? Apparently it's gonna wig out and not show me. I mean, it's kind of showing me, but not really. I'd like my point to be right before the KSC. No, did you just go? What oh, you stupid thing? All right, maybe I need to wait until I'm out of physics range for this. Cause I'm, for whatever reason, I'm having a hard time making this maneuver. Cause it's just the frame rates are killing me here. I think we're out of physics range now. Yeah, we are, okay. Good, out of physics range. We want mission control to be our target. Which, I guess I can't double click that, so, okay. But, uh, we want uh, probably a maneuver to be right about here, I think. Probably. And then if I go retrograde from here, get my apoapsis to be, or my periapsis to be like 35k? I think that's the magic number. 40k, something like that. Maybe it's 40k. But I also want to move this back so that my my landing spot, yeah, here we go. So landing spot needs to be, there we go, come on. Come on trajectories, you got this, you can do it. I think if I make it slightly before, that'll be fine because I think this is gonna end up extending with a plane. I think it ends up extending a bit, so. It might go further. Just to be on the safe side though. Actually, I'm gonna leave it there because I'd rather land on land than water because I wanna land on my wheels. So that's my maneuver, I think. That's gonna be my maneuver. Which is eight minutes away. Cool, eight minutes away. Let's face the node. Look at that sunrise. Oh yeah. <laughs> Look at that sunrise. That's beautiful, isn't it? It's beautiful, I think. <clears throat> Is the station in any danger? I don't think so. Station's not in any danger yet. Uh, we've got about, I think it was like what, 100 and, 190 days 
worth of uh, supplies on there. Plus it has its own recyclers, so it can extend life support to like a year, I think, with the recycling it does. So I think, and that's with a full crew. I think a full crew on the station can, can a full crew on the station can last 190 days with no recycling. Um, or with, I think that's with the recycling. 190 days. But a full crew on that station is like 60 Kerbals. So we're not going to get a full crew on the station. I think there's there's 12 on the station right now, I think. And I think they can last about a year. So we're not in any danger yet. Got, got time. <clears throat> Alright, so... Come on now. That's my that's my maneuver node. Okay. Let's go this way. Bye station. See the station so far ahead of us now. See? It's all because its orbit is lower. Whoa! I missed my mark. That's fine though. Let's burn. We don't have to get super precise. I'm not even entirely sure I can enter the atmosphere and live. So whatever. Not a big deal. I'm going to lower the volume here. We're going to start getting engines running, so you guys probably don't want the engines to be super loud. Man, these... I don't have any fuel left. Like, I got none. This is going to suck. We're just going to have to glide. We're just going to have to maintain a glide and just land wherever we can land. If we end up getting on the runway, cool, but I don't have confidence in the runway. I, I've never landed on the runway from space before, so I have no idea how that even, how the logistics behind that even works. What you're supposed to time it as, where your maneuver is supposed to be relative to the landing strip, where your periapsis should be when your maneuver's done, your angle of attack as you end. I don't know any of that stuff, so I just, I just want to get in there and survive, you know? And I have a I have a contingency plan for Andre if he if he uh, if the plane starts blowing up you know there are there are parachutes I don't want to open all the bays but whatever there are parachutes mounted right here these four parachutes here if this whole thing goes kaplooey and um, we end up with just a just a cockpit lighting all by itself uh, first off these wings actually will help it glide in in a controlled way. They actually will act as wings. It's one of the reasons why I have big ones here. But these parachutes will also fire off. We have them on the final stage here. So those will also fire, and then we'll be able to save them that way. So anyway, just something. Just let you guys know. There's no risk. To, there's, there's a little risk to life, but it's not like a huge risk to life. Limb. Life and limb. Maybe a little bit to limb. All right. Add no pack more fuel. Yeah, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Because I had too much oxidizer. So um, it's always an experiment when you build a new plane to kind of get the balance right on where your fuel is kept and sort of how much to bring up a certain resource. And I think this tank here is going to get transformed from a liquid fuel oxidizer tank to purely liquid fuel. Um, that makes sense to me because I have, I have a ton of oxidizer left, you know? Like I got oxidizer in this tank. I've got some in this tank. I've got some left in this tank. I've also got some left in each of the black tanks, I think. Yep, a little bit. And this is after I transferred like 800 oxidizer to that tug. So like there's a ton. I had way, way too much. So I'm gonna transform this tank into purely liquid fuel and that should take care of it. I think the reason why I have too much is because um, when I built this plane and I was thinking about like, you know, how much fuel I needed, I was using the Valkyrie engines, which are much more efficient. And I was burning less liquid fuel in the atmosphere on my ascent than I was here. I burn more liquid fuel on ascent with these engines. Um, and so I end up with less liquid fuel relative to the oxidizer. So if I had more liquid fuel, then I would be able to burn more oxidizer, but it's fine. It's, it's, it's totally cool, whatever. Okay. Thank you for the maneuver, flight computer. Appreciate that. Your services are no longer required. So uh, we're just going to face prograde now. 
get ourselves close to, I guess, the Atmo, the atmosphere. There we go. And, uh oh, uh oh. All right, we gotta turn ourselves. Let's uh, get rid of Mech Jeb, we don't need that. We don't need no stinking autopilots. <laughs> we hope we don't need any stinking autopilots. Let's go to free cam so we don't completely disorient everyone and everyone's like looking at the screen going, huh? <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's pick our nose up here. Oh, we got it. steadiness, steady. Here we go, let's get the air brakes out. Yes, we have air brakes installed. I didn't forget the drag in the back, as required. I had a comment on my recent video. Um, I forget which one it is. It's not a recent video. I think it was episode 71 or something. Um, I made a comment and said that the, the way physics is, the part that's heaviest or the side of the vehicle that's heaviest is always the side that wants to fall first. Um, and somebody told me that wasn't correct. And like, it totally is correct. <laughs> but I'm curious, like, why they think it's not correct? Because um, that's just how everything works. When you drop something, you drop a, I don't know, drop anything. Drop anything, like literally anything. And the side of that anything that is heaviest will be the bottom. It will go, it will fall first. That, that side will be the side that falls first. However, uh, and I, I made the comment because my plane before, my scimitar plane before, had a problem with re-entry because it would, I need to get rid of these. Let's retract the solar panels. Um, it had a problem in re-entry before because it would keep flipping over and turning backwards. And it's because the engines are so much heavier than the front, which is why you usually want all of your resources to be at the front of the plane, right? You wanna transfer all of your resources from the back of the plane to the front of the plane to move as much weight at the front as possible so that you have that. But um, they were saying that's incorrect because you can do like, you should put drag on the back of your plane. Yes, putting drag on the back of the plane is one way to keep it steady, is one way to keep it stable, but that has nothing to do with, you know, like the weight part that has things to do with like aerodynamics. But yes, so, in response to him, and he knows who he is, I don't remember who it is off the top of my head, but um, in response to them, we are both right. Uh, we are both right. Um, uh, the heaviest part of an object will be the object that falls first. This is why we put big heavy heat shields on the front of our command pods, because the big heavy heat shield will fall first. Um, I, I challenge you to try and make your command module, your command pod, fall head first when you have a heat shield on the bottom. Good luck with that. I really challenge you to try that um, without having overpowered reaction wheels, of course. Um, it won't happen. That's the reason why we do it. Um, that's the reason why it falls so, sta so steady like that. But um, if you add drag to the back of your plane, that does influence quite a bit. It helps you prevent the flipping, prevent the flipping because it just does. <laughs> I'm not smart enough with physics to be able to explain it off the top of my head as to why the drag does, but I'm sure someone in the comments who is not currently paying attention to his descent and not paying attention to really anything else uh, will be able to share that with you. Wings are too big. Well, you know, I had a choice to make. I either had wings that were too small or wings that were too big. I chose too big. I like the wings big, honestly. I like big wings. I'm a big fan of big wings. And it's the broadsword. I mean, look at it. It's like a handle. You have your little, you know, what is, what is it called? What is that thing called on, on swords that protects your hands? It's got a name, and I, it's off the tip of my tongue. I just, it's, ah, it's right there. I just, I know it. I should know this from all my times filming at Comic-Cons and holding swords. And my friend who, like, collects swords, and I talk to him all the time. What? I don't remember what it's called. Ugh, oh well. Anyway, I like I like the uh All right. Anyway, <laughs> I'm reading the comments while trying to think of something 
while trying to focus on this. It's not working out really well. Is it just called a handguard? I thought it had a different name. Like, I'm pretty sure it has a different name than a handguard. Hilt, there you go. There you go. I, I, I'm pretty sure that's the name I was thinking of, a hilt. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I was thinking of, yeah. That's cool, all right. So it kind of looks like we have this really big hilt on the sword, and then we have the, the blade, which comes to like a, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just, I, it's called the broadsword because of the engines, right? The, the, I changed the engines from the old engines to the broadswords, and that's why I named it the broadsword. So there you go. It's not that original. I didn't come up with it myself or anything, but it just is. All right, we're falling. Still have a ways to fall. Kind of hoping our electric charge holds up throughout this descent. We're descending quite slowly. And I probably should have, well, I can't, I, if I would have docked, I would have done it, but I didn't dock. If I would have docked, I would have transferred the um, supplies to the station because I won't need them anymore on this, but it's okay. It's not hilt. So it's cross guard. Okay, cross guard. Well, okay. I don't know swords. If you couldn't tell, I don't know swords very well. So I'm going to take the opinions of the people that do. And John there is an infantry veteran. So I'm going to go ahead and assume that that guy knows what he's talking about. <laughs> all right. So I think that's pretty much all I have to say. I'm just trying to focus on the plane not burning up. The wings are getting hot. That's a thing. We're keeping our uh, solid about 30 degrees right now. The hilt is the entirety of the cross guard grip and pommel. Okay, there you go. One of them isn't deployed. What? What do you mean? One isn't deployed. They're all deployed. I have three on the bottom and four on the top. I know it looks weird because you'd think they'd be four and four, but it's three and four. I don't know. I guess I could change that. But are we telling me not to? Are we telling me not to deploy my brakes yet? Should I not deploy the brakes yet? I thought I wanted more. Okay, fine. We won't deploy the brakes yet. Fine. Whatever you say. craft will fall faster than a rock. I, I doubt it will fall faster than a rock. I, 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 I'm pretty sure it won't fall faster than a rock. My vertical speed right now is only 94 meters per second, and it's slowing down. My, my vertical speed is slowing down. So, you know, I think we're falling maybe too slow. But it's okay. What's my trajectory look like? We're not going to get to the KSC, that's for sure. Definitely not going to get to the Kerbal Space Center. Maybe I should turn my engines on and accelerate us forward. That would require us to burn inefficiently. Because that would be burning my nuclear engines in the atmosphere now, which is not good. Not preferred. Let's turn the lights on. Huh? Need some lights on this thing. We don't have a whole lot of lights on the plane. Uh, I probably could add more, but I've got the typical green and red on the wings, kind of like that, which you can't see really well, especially the red one because the tip of the wing is red. Uh, it's not just the heat, but also the fact that it's actually colored red. Uh, and then that the green and red is on the front here too. Uh, and then there is one light on the front, right underneath where the docking port is, that will help me with docking. Um, and then there are also lights on the landing gear as well. So when we get down to the surface, um, when we get down to the surface, I'll be able to see the ground pretty well, even if it's dark. Um, but I don't have another. I don't have a whole lot of lights on the plane other than that. So okay, starting to get hot. Still falling. Yeah, 
Still falling, keeping it at about 35 degrees or so. Should be good enough to spread out this force amongst all of the, the parts here, the wings and whatever. And if we get too much on the wings, I can always nose down a bit. If we get too much on the nose, I gotta nose up. It's much easier to nose down than it is to nose up. So I wanna keep our, gonna keep the nose up as long as I can. I don't wanna go too high, but I do wanna keep the nose up. If I need to help with it, if I need help with the nose, I can always uh, grab the assistance of my mono propellant to help me keep the nose up where I need to be. I'm thinking 30 degrees is where I want to be here. I think 30 is where I want. Maybe a little bit higher. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how the temperature starts reading. I'm not sure if it'll be easier or harder to come down without far installed. I, I imagine it's easier in stock, but I don't know. I guess we'll find out. I know I can't determine like the strength of my parts anymore because that's a far feature. So I can't tell the, the I want the wings to be 90% of their strength, which would reduce their weight, help, help keep the weight down, but reduces the, the strength of the part. That was something you could do with far and I, I can't do that anymore. So now we just get what we get. Holding pretty steady here at 30 degrees though. I, I agree, Krios. I think re-entry would be super scary in real life. It would be exhilarating, wouldn't it? I think I would like to re-enter the atmosphere with someone who's very experienced at re-entering the atmosphere. I would feel safe, but still having that, that rush to where if I was like, hey, by the way, you're stranded in space and you never re-entered before, have fun. Uh, that, would be, that would be terrifying. I think the other way would just be really awesome experience. I actually think I would look forward to it. I'd probably pass out because <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if my, my, my body could handle that. Um, that's why I'll never be an astronaut <laughs> probably. I do get motion sickness too. So uh, I think the stresses would probably be enough to make me sick probably too i don't know we'll see or maybe we won't see i'm super pumped about spacex like they've proven in just like five years they've went ahead they went from being a company that was on the verge of just not existing anymore you know taking all of elon's money like everything he had um to being a super successful company that's done something that was considered undoable before, or at least had never been done before, you know? It's just phenomenal. I can't wait to see what they come up with next. I'm really excited about that. If they keep going at the pace they're going and they keep innovating like this and they keep coming up with ideas like this, I mean, the thing I'm most excited about, I think, is like their whole mission to make space attainable for more people, you know, to make it cheaper and make it something that more people can interact with. Uh, I'm just super excited about that. It won't happen in my lifetime. Um, or at least it probably won't happen to its fullest extent in my lifetime, but I'm excited about it for my son. You know, just, I look at him and I go, you know, dude, you got no idea how lucky you are. Cause this, this is something that's going to happen in your lifetime. You know, I'm going to tell him he's, he's only, he's not even two yet, but when he's, you know, five, six, seven, he's starting to get into stuff. I'm going to be like, this is something that's going to happen in your lifetime. And you, I'm super excited for you because I am. It's just, it's just the, the entire concept to say that anyone can go to space if they want to, is just, that's fantastic. You know, if they can lower the cost of space flight to like 10 grand, you know, 15 grand, so many people will want to go to space for that. Even middle-class people, hell, I would save up money. I would save up. I mean, my wife and I, we spend combined together, we spend like $4,000 on, on all of us to go to, to go to Vietnam for a month to visit family, right? Just, just don't go anywhere, save money for three or four years, and you get to go and, and see space for a half hour or, or for an hour or maybe a day. I don't know. You get to go to the International Space Station for a day or something. Like, way worth it, you know? So, so cool. All right, 
So far, the re-entry is very easy. <laughs> so far. The SAS is keeping us pointed at this. He's, it's, it's using my monopropellant to keep us up. But eventually, we're going to get low enough in the atmosphere to where this monopropellant's not going to be enough anymore. But this angle of attack is, like, right on. It's working pretty well. So far, anyway. But it was always around 35, 30K, and 35K. It's usually where I started having problems. Yeah, we're not going to make it to the KSC. No way. We're going to have to land somewhere else, but that's fine. We'll get most of our costs back because of the plane, so it's fine. I need to figure out where to make that maneuver. Like, how do people enter... You know, like I'm going to watch one of Matt's videos, I think, and just see where do you make this maneuver and how do you enter to get that angle. I'm sure he has a video on it, a tutorial on it or something on how to do it, and I'll probably look at that, but yeah. Okay, then. So. Okay. I'm reading your comments now. Yeah, I just imagine this too. Like, where does Tesla go from here, right? I'm going back to geeking out on Elon Musk here. Um, where does Tesla go from here? I think the most natural progression of where they go from here, aside from, you know, autonomous cars, which is coming, you know, that's almost, it's basically here already. Um, aside from that, though, honestly, tackle commercial airlines, man. Make an airline, make a plane. Like, serious, a, a fully electric plane. Done. <laughs> you know? Seriously, why not? We have electric everything else except planes. Do it. Quit this jet fuel crap. You don't need that. You could do it, Elon. And then, and then when the plane is way up in the air, way up in the sky like that, the solar energy it can receive for energy is like, yeah, you know? I mean, it's not going to be enough to power it, but you have huge batteries on the plane. You could totally do it, dude. You could totally do it. I think you could do it. I mean, you're already a space company, and you're a reusable space company, and an electric, an awesome renewable energy-focused electric car company. There's a middle ground there, and it's airplanes, and you can do it. I know you can, dude. Okay. I think we're probably just going to land wherever we can. There's no entry. There's no re-entry problems here at all. This is this is so this is super good. It's so steady. It's because of the monopropellant, but it's so steady. So just make sure I have enough monopropellant to come in, and then we're good. You know. I think I'm gonna put the brakes on. I want to slow down a bit more. Let's throw these brakes up a bit. Get ourselves slowing down a bit more. And we'll just look for a nice comfy spot to land. It looks like a whole bunch of land underneath me. I could probably go back that way. I'm going too fast for that, but I could probably land somewhere over here. I think that'll probably work out okay. So we'll leave the brakes up for... I don't know. We get to... When we get to the point where we're not burning anymore, or we get to the point where it's not all red anymore, you might turn turn the brakes off, but honestly, I don't think it matters. I think we're good. I don't think we have anything to worry about on re-entry. That was nice, smooth, easy re-entry there. All right, so. I think we're good here. Uh, as far as the questions asking me when I'm going to release the next episode, um, I don't answer that question. I will never answer that question because I don't have an answer to that question. See, now we're getting to the point where I can't keep the can't keep the nose up anymore. Nope, can't keep it up. Now we're starting to fall, but you know what? I think we're slow enough now to where it doesn't matter. Let's just let's just put the brakes on and slow ourselves down. We need to slow ourselves down. Because now we're to the point where I can't, 
I'm unable to. Uh, yeah. So anyway, yeah, I don't answer that question anymore. Um, 84 was the last episode I had last year. And then I, I've released 85 and 86 this year. Um, this month, actually, I released 85 on April 1st. I released April, uh, I released 86 on April 2nd. Um, 85 was mostly a recap episode. It wasn't like a, a real episode. <laughs> Uh, and then 86 was kind of a, I mean, it was an episode. It was just kind of like what I'm about to do, what I'm trying to do, and I did something, so cool. Um, this flight here was actually going to be an episode. I've decided to make it a stream because I just feel like it's not enough content for a legit episode. I feel like it's something that's, it's just one of those things that you normally would just do off camera, you know? Like, oh, I brought these guys up here. I would mention it in passing, but um, the next episode will be... There will be a lot of like little things where I say, hey, if you want to see that, go see the stream. Um, I am going to promote the streams a bit in the next episode, just an FYI. But um, I'm doing this one in kind of the middle of the day instead of late at night because I thought people in other time zones might like, might like a chance to uh, hang out with me. So normally I do these at night and um, at night for me. But I have some time here and I thought, you know, I could, I could do a stream right now. I didn't want it to last three hours. But, you know, it did. So, shoot me. <laughs> Get that nose up. Come on. You can do it. It really doesn't want to. But I think we're good now. Speed-wise, I think we're really good. So I don't think we have anything to worry about now. I think now it's just about finding a place to land. So... Where is that place going to be? I don't know. Probably down this way. Aren't these little areas where there's lights? I think this is for. Wasn't there like a mod that remapped? Well, I have stock visual terrain installed, so that might be it. There's like this mod that used to exist, like Kerbal Cities, I think. It might still exist, but I just don't have it installed. But I think it added like certain cities and stuff to Kerbin. It adds like little lights like this, like it's a population center. It's not actually a population center, but I think normally areas that are lit up like that are, are usually flat. So I'm thinking I'm going to try and, um, I think I'm going to try and uh, just land in one of those spots there. Probably. We'll do that. Tilt, tilt down, speed is too low. Well, I am tilting down. I'm pointing directly at my prograde vector, and I'm still decelerating. So I don't know why I would need more speed than this. I mean, I can always get more speed by just nosing down. I don't need to nose down yet, but if I'm going to land over there, I need to get over there. But this this plane can float for a while. It's It's not a tank. It can float for quite a while because of the wings. I mean, I can stay stable in flight at like at 10 at 10,000 meters, I can stay stable at flight at like 120 meters per second. Like it's it's pretty insane. I can go really slow with this plane and still maintain control. So, I'm not worried about it. I think the last time I landed, I uh I landed this in a in a grassy area. Um when I was testing before I started streaming, and by the time my wheels touched the ground, I was doing 40 meters per second. And I landed controlled, like perfectly fine. Uh, my vertical velocity was like one meter per second. So it's, like I was doing 40. Like it, it'll, it'll flow, it'll be fine. All right, so anyway. What's this? See, arrow forces, see? And I'm still, I'm still decelerating. I'm pointing towards my prograde, and I'm still decelerating. So it's fine. It's fine. Yeah, I think I'm just going to land down there. That seems fine. Let's just nose down. Go down that way. And... Uh, then we'll collect the plane and call it a day. How far away did I get? Oh, quite a ways. It's like a Africa to Mexico kind of thing there. 
it's pretty far away from my target. So I'm gonna have to figure out how to time that a little bit better. Okay, I could probably turn the engines on. Well, not the nukes. I don't want the nukes on. Uh, air breathing. Deprived of air. Oh, right. Turn the air on. <laughs> there. Now this will hopefully... No, actually my engines don't have an alternator. Good to know. Broadswords do not have an alternator in them. Okay. So I'm able to go 142 meters per second. I have that much delta V remaining. So, okay. Good to know. Still slowing down, despite going downwards. Still slowing down. And, um... I have uh, two sets of parachutes, for the one asking the question. I have two sets of parachutes. Um, I have the drogue chutes here. These are, these are gonna just drag, basically, behind me. And that's to slow me down if I have to land anywhere that's not the runway. Um, I can land and slow down quite quicker, much quicker with that. Um, in the event that I am falling straight down or it's out of control or maybe my wings break or something happens in, in re-entry and I'm unable to land the craft traditionally, like a plane should, um, I then have these three really big parachutes on each side, so six parachutes total. The uh, amount of drag that these induce on the craft is equivalent to about four or five parachutes of the other type of parachute. These are really big parachutes. They're also very heavy. They're almost a ton each. Um, so it's quite heavy as well. But those parachutes are required to get this plane to fall at about nine meters per second uh, at, its, at its fastest point, which I believe is well within the... Um, crash rating for the wheels and it's a right above the center of mass so the plane should in theory come down flat on its wheels if for some reason the balance is off and the in the the cabin is too heavy and the cabin's nose down i also have inside the cargo bay there's four other parachutes in the cabin i can deploy those that will lift the tail up and if for some reason the back end is too heavy um i can also deploy these drogue chutes at that point and kind of equal it out. So um, there's there's a lot of parachutes here as like a contingency plan to, to save lives if I have to save the pilot's life for some reason. But um, for the most part, this is a pretty controllable plane and I shouldn't have much of an issue landing it. I just gotta find a nice spot to land. I have 120 meters per second left. Um, yeah, just falling now. Let's just kill the air for a second. Well, apparently I didn't kill the air. I thought I just closed all the air. Yeah, it's closed. Wondering how these engines are still operating with the air closed, but all right. Fair enough. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I guess they had some saved up somewhere. So that's how I'm gonna shut these engines off. Uh, I'll keep them on like this. Um, I have a toggle for whether I wanna do it with like, you know, like a rocket or like a jet engine. And my way of toggling them off completely in jet mode is just to shut them off of air, shut the air, like whatever. So all the air intakes, if I shut them, then, well, you know, then the engines can't breathe and they won't they won't run. I think I can probably just like whip this around. This looks pretty flat though, doesn't it? I guess we won't know until we get down there, but I'm pretty sure this looks flat. It's kind of flat to me anyway. The big, the big wheels. Okay, so 
Surface speed is 175. Not bad. We're falling quite quickly though, so I'm good with that. It is pretty dark. Um, we are landing during the night. I, uh, you know, I wanted to land in the Kerbin Space Center. Let's get ourselves turned around. I want to land over there. I think it's flatter right there. Could be wrong, but I think I'm getting closer to mountains, so I want to land this way. Whoa now. There we go. That's better. Okay, we'll save the we'll save the last of this fuel. Well, looks like we can't because it's gonna it's gonna use it anyway. These engines take a long time to just like settle down, and so it'll burn it'll burn fuel while it's settling down. Like, even if you hit X, it'll still gradually settle down, which it makes sense. But now we are completely out of fuel, so we're just going to land wherever we can now. When we get closer to the ground, we'll be able to see a little bit better because I do have lights. If I turn around again, actually, that'll slow me down and, and allow me to get where I want to be. So actually, let's just turn this this way. This is pretty flat. Forgot to add pie. What do you care, Bob? You're not on the station. <laughs> all the Kerbals in this series, in case you guys didn't know, if you guys are just joining us or whatever, uh, all the Kerbals in the Conquering series uh, have been changed to the viewers. The viewers' names are in the series, so um, I have about 110 applicants, about 110 people that wanted to be part of it. Um, I've got about 31 of you, I think, uh, into the game so far, so it's very cool. Um, I'm still accepting names if you want to be. You have to enter on the recruitment video. You can't just enter on any video. You have to enter on the recruitment video follow the instructions on the recruitment video and tell me what class you want to be. We have custom classes installed in this game, so it's not just pilot, scientist, and engineer. There are people like medics, technicians, miners, biologists, geologists, quartermasters, scouts. Scout sounds pretty cool. Um, it's a class that will get used a lot later, not so much now, but classes, scouts will get used a lot later because um, they don't get homesick. That's a really awesome thing, which means scouts will be able to go on the long journeys, right? You guys will be the ones that are going to be like taking the lead when we go to Elu and things, you know. So if you want to go to manned missions to faraway places, a scout might be the class for you. Okay. Getting our nose picked up a little bit here. Let's slow our vertical speed just a little bit. We don't need this up anymore. We don't have any speed. All right, yeah, we're, we're cruising. We're good here. 200 meters above the ground. We're going to start seeing what kind of ground we're dealing with here. Lights are going to start shining on the ground. Everything looks, everything looks nominal so far. Let's pick our nose up a bit. We're going to start slowing down to about 100 meters per second. Like I said, though, I can, this plane is like the wingspan and everything. I can glide for a long time. All right, so I think kind of pulled up a little bit aggressively there, but it's okay, we're falling now. Get the brakes on. And
Whoop, we touched it. We bounced a little bit. We're bouncing. Don't want to bounce. We're gliding so gracefully, aren't we? Okay, open the droves. And we'll slow ourselves right down. Nice, soft landing. You didn't even see me hit the ground. And we have landed safely on the surface of Kerbin. Touchdown. It's taking a while to stop. Taking a long time to stop. Are the brakes not on? Because I'm pretty sure I said brake. Was I still in the air? What is going on here? Why is it taking forever to stop? <laughs> that was a really, really long, long, long break. We're still braking. Do I not have brakes on this or what? Brakes are at 150. Okay. Well, we're here. <laughs> Recover vessel. Let's see how much money we get back. Okay. Cool. Well, successful mission today. We've we've recovered our base on Kerbin. We know what we know what our plan is now. And um, I want to show you guys a couple of other things really quick before I leave. Uh, really, just one thing. I want to show you guys one thing, and then we're gonna leave. Um, it won't take long. Two minutes, three minutes tops. Um, as soon as I recover this, is it really that dark outside? I think so. We got 176,000 back, so that's actually not as much as I wanted. We should have been closer. Darn. Yeah, we are really, really, yeah. So this is another graphical thing. Going back to the KSC, there's gonna be all sorts of graphical bugs. Sometimes the KSC is underwater. Sometimes it's just pitch black until you zoom right in. Um, there's a whole, all sorts of things that keep happening, but it doesn't really affect play when you get to a craft. It just affects, you know, this area, so whatever. Anyway, one more time, back to the space plane hangar. I wanna show you guys. So when we started the stream, and for those of you who watched the last ones, you probably saw like we had trailers and stuff all over the place, all right? These are, these, all these resource trailers were everywhere and they're all hooked up with CCR2 ports and stuff. That's not the plan. That was just what I was doing to kind of plug things in and see how things work, which ones I might need, which ones I'm not gonna need, etc. cetera. Um, we'll just go ahead and save this really quick just in case it isn't already. Uh, I have a different plan for the actual surface. Um, what we're gonna end up building on the actual surface for this stuff looks a lot more like this. As soon as it loads. Looks a lot more like this. So this is a pretty simple thing. The trailers all get docked to a central um, sort of girder, if you will, that all have docking ports on them. They all get docked in like this. And then inside each, inside all these docking ports, there's actually a 6K battery. And so not only is this providing a way for us to connect all the resources up, but we also have a ton of electric charge possible that's gathered right here because we're gonna need more battery. We don't have enough battery and we're gonna lose power. Mimis's night takes forever. And so I thought, I need a place to store more batteries, but I want it to kind of be integrated in the base so you don't see it. And so this is what we're gonna be doing right here. And um, I think this is gonna work out okay. We don't have to do it all at once. It's modular. We can do the middle section and then do, you know, do it like one at a time and connect them up. So I'll probably build them one at a time with those construction docking ports, dock them together with the construction docking ports, erase the docking port, et cetera, until we have something that looks like this. And uh, another thing I'm considering doing also is because of parts, because this is a lot of parts, right? Like a lot of parts. Another thing I'm considering doing is just scrapping this entire idea and just building like the crates with like, basically it's Minmus, right? So we just build the crate and then we take a, take a claw on a rover and just drive it into position and just set it next to each other. I'm thinking about doing that too. I probably will do one of those two things, but anyway. Here's all the resources. Um, this is almost all of them. There's, there's actually one that isn't here and that's hydrates, but we don't need hydrates because we're gonna have water. 
Hydrates are only good for making water. We're going to be over top of water. So that's one resource I don't need. Um, so they have material kits here. We have um, this is container for metals. We have polymers, supplies. We have ore. There probably, probably will be several ore tanks, but this is just one. We have specialized parts. We have uraninite. And then there will have to be another container later that stores enriched uranium. Um, we have substrates, fertilizers, gypsum, in, in refined exotics. We have colony supplies will be a very important one for the long term. We have polymers. Didn't I already do polymers? Oh, I have two polymer tanks. Well, hang on. Can I do anything else with this? Uh oh, that's not what I want to do. I already have this one. I think I have all of them. I'm not going to do carbonite. I don't really care about carbonite. I have it installed. I might as well use it. Yeah, whatever. You get the point. <laughs> we'll make this an ore tank because because we're gonna need more than one ore tank anyway. So yeah, probably. Or we could just do dirt. I don't have a dirt tank, so there you go. We need dirt. Supplies, organics. The labels. The labels backwards here. It's gonna bug me. Come on now. Get in there. Oh, come on now. Get in there. Not going to do it, are you? Going to fight the power? Is that what we're doing here? Really? You just don't want to go back in the trailer. Okay, well, whatever. You can just hang out like that then. I'll do it later. Anyway, that's the concept. That's the stream. Thanks for watching. Um, surprisingly, my client hasn't logged into Skype yet, but it is what it is. I'll, I'll contact him instead. Thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. It's been fun. I'll see you next time. <clears throat> Hopefully with a better voice so I can keep talking. Bye-bye. <clears throat>